Right. We'll call the uh, June 3rd budget work session of the Macon County Board of Commissioners to order. I'd like to welcome uh, everyone in attendance, and uh, I assure you we will uh, make time to hear all of you uh, this evening. Uh, this is, again, I will uh, reiterate, this is our first work session uh, since uh, it's been given the uh, county manager's recommended budget. So we're here to uh, listen, gain evidence. Uh, this is the first time we as commissioners have had the opportunity to hash this out among ourselves. And I know there's going to be some questions for our county manager. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions for some of you here in attendance. Uh, and I'm sure uh, Lori, our finance director, is going to have several answers for us as well. So I appreciate, again, appreciate all of you uh, being here. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to try and get through this as quickly as possible. I know we don't want to make it home for dinner and uh, be with our families. So. Uh, Let's we'll start off with our uh, fire department budget discussions. I believe we have uh, two departments that are uh, asking for a, a tax increase uh, for this year. Uh, just let's go the alphabetical order. We'll start with Burning Town first. So. Welcome, uh, Mr. Shuler. Welcome. Thank y'all. Just to give a little uh, background to those in attendance here, Vernon uh, uh, Town's current rate per thousand is 0 0.1056. They're asking to go to 0 0.112, which is approximately a 5% increase, roughly. And I think it's about $12,000 annually. Is so I'm, I'm going to, I'll let you do your presentation, but I've already got questions off that. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is uh, Michael Schuler. I'm chief of Burntown Fire Department. Um, the day I come before you, not only as a chief of the fire department, but also a community member of Burntown, Iowa, uh, before you in your booklets, uh, you have our budget request for the fiscal year 21-22. to 22. Uh, I've asked for a $12,000 increase uh, from... Like Mr. Tate said, from 0 0.1056 to 0 0.1112. Uh, as a homeowner myself in Burningtown, Iowa, uh, I don't like to see an increase in my taxes. But as a, I do know as a fire chief, as sometimes it's necessary. Uh, do I want to see an increase? No. Uh, I know how hard it is to survive these days on the pennies we make. Uh, but what people don't understand and what people don't see is the cost for anything in public safety these days. Uh, sometimes they're doubled or tripled in value just because you put fire, EMS, or law enforcement in front of it. Uh, what they don't see is the PPE or personal protection equipment we have has a life cycle on it. Bunker gear has a 10-year life cycle and it has to be changed out. Uh, medical supplies in the last three to four months went from $18 and some cents for a box of medical gloves to $33 a box two weeks ago. Uh, EpiPens, our department, or one of the only fire departments in Macon County that carry EpiPens because we're so far out. Uh, in the last three years, we've saved three lives because of the EpiPens. Adult EpiPens are $693 a piece for us. Uh, child EpiPens are $423 a piece. For us. Uh, this time last year, fuel prices, we were paying $1.80 a gallon for diesel. We have our own diesel tank. Last week, we paid $3.10 a gallon. Uh, and like before, like I said, anything in public safety has an expiration date on it. The EpiPens included, they're good for one year. If we do not use them, we have to dispose of them and get new ones. Uh, if anybody has any questions or anything, feel free to ask. I'll be more than glad to try to answer them for you. Well, I'll start. Uh, Chief Shuler, uh, I appreciate what y'all do. And of course, uh, I don't think that this board doesn't uh, support all of our volunteer fire departments of 110%, or we, we do our best to do so. Uh, I've got to ask from a financial perspective, though, uh, $12,000 is such minimal increase overall. I mean, I understand most houses might it might only increase their taxes a dollar so it's going to be more but can you not find that in your budget uh, not come with just a twelve thousand increase on the last year we had the, i understand that uh, last year we done three fundraisers 
Right. This year we had four planned. We've already done one. I understand. Right. I, I didn't think about that, about the extra uh, extra money that you right. gave from those because of COVID, you probably weren't able to hit those. So. Right. We were not. Uh, the reason I'm asking for the increase is just to cover the fuel, the cost, the EpiPens went up and stuff like that. Everything else we can pretty much cover with the budget we have. I wouldn't be asking for the $12,000. If you weren't if, that tight. If we weren't that tight with the increase of maintenance fees and stuff like that for a engine to get the oil changed and the engine as a pumper tanker, it's seven hundred and twenty three dollars just for an oil change right. this year. And that's something the inflation that we wasn't counting on in the budget from last year is the inflation and with everything else with COVID going on. Sure. Uh, sure. And I don't want to go more higher than that because I know how it is to pinch pennies and live paycheck to paycheck, especially in our community. I mean, we see it. We've got a lot of people that's on Social Security and disability and stuff like that. How are like you that. doing overall with your truck payments, your building payments, or anything? Uh, so, I mean, I know you're building. You've got a new one, so it won't be right. coming off anytime soon. Do you have any trucks coming off? Uh, we have one truck coming off in October, mm -hmm. correct? Good. And uh, other than that, we have only owe one more truck and then the, the building itself, and that's it. Good. Chief well, Sheila, are you still having to maintain the you still having to maintain the uh, the building at Davis Creek too, right? That's correct, yes. Are they I know you're having to put some monies in it just because yeah. of the age of the building. Do you happen to know about how much maintenance and the upkeep on that is on that on that building? Uh, we uh, for uh, propane wise in the winter, which because of the trucks are parked there and stuff, it's about two hundred dollars a month on propane in the winter and an electrical bill. Uh, besides that we do all maintain everything else. We've had a lot of people donate some money for like for fixes of the roof and siding and stuff like that. And we've, we've been pretty lucky. Is that building getting some real age on it? It is. So I don't, you don't know when you might, might be a big one of them big pine trees. Go through the middle. Uh, it might be bad uh, I'm trying to put together right now a six year plan and that includes that building down there. Um, it's not going to be nothing drastic, but we're going to have to start thinking about, you know, replacing the roof and stuff like that. And another way. benefit coming up a week from Saturday. That's correct. Yeah, that'll be our that's second that's benefit. Tell them. Then, Get that in the newspaper. <laughs> we're going to write that down. <laughs> and then we've got a, uh, we sponsor a softball tournament in August and then our chili drive through dinner in October. So, but it's not like we're, we're trying not to, to waste money and stuff and we're not. Uh, We've come up with different ways. COVID threw a curveball for us, and what used to be dine-in barbecue and dine-in chili dinners turned into drive through the bay and pick it up and see you next year. You know, we can't talk to you and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's I know it's threw a curveball to all the volunteer departments around here. Mr. Shells, Mr. Higgins, go ahead. <clears throat> I've got, a, I've got a simple question. Yes, sir. Not a lot of large trucks as well. I mean, seven hundred dollars for an oil change. Do you guys change your oil? Can we take advantage of other county maintenance? We cannot change oil ourselves. Uh, anything we do, it has to be by a certified emergency service mechanic. Which yes. that's the reason we use Carolina Cat. They have emergency service mechanics. If we were to change it ourselves, and something happened to that truck and it caused somebody injury, then our insurance will not cover nothing. It's just hard to swallow, but I just wonder if we can't share other county you know, maintenance. Uh, the chief for routine maintenance. You right. Know, I understand working on ladders and pumps and you know all the real technical. Right. Uh, the, we had a chief's meeting a couple of months ago, and mm -hmm. that's something all the chiefs had mentioned was uh, maybe getting somebody certified in county maintenance or getting a countywide contract county with yeah. Carolina Cat or Quality Auto or something like that, and we're getting prices together and. Terry, when's the next Chiefs meeting? The next That's when we'll have everything together and the Chiefs will go from there. Commissioner Hagan? You know, I share your thoughts about everybody having a hard time right now. It's, this inflation is just, I've, I've spent the day just trying to round up products for my business that I'm flabbergasted at the cost of everything. The cost of hit you have hit the other 11 departments also. Correct. And have a tax increase. Uh, the thing I don't like about the way these budgets are presented or request, it doesn't reflect your reserve funds. Uh, right now in the emergency reserve fund, we have uh, $40,000 in case anything happens to any of the trucks. 
if an engine goes out or something like that, we have to replace a whole engine or anything like that. And then we have a $20,000 in case anything happens to the old building or we have to buy a spare pair of a chainsaw or something like that, something that we need for inspections or ISO or anything like that. So we have a total of $60,000 in the emergency reserve fund that we do not cool. touch. I mean, you've got the 60 k in there now. Yes, that's correct. Uh, and is there any guidance on guidelines on what percent? I know we as a county state recommends we keep, you know, one month's. I, when I was handed over, took over as chief, nobody told me anything about any guidance on keeping any reserve funds. Uh, that's something that even when I was assistant chief for the prior six years, it's something that we have always kept in there and did not touch. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good little fund though. You got a 250, 230. What's your budget? 230. Uh, 235, 237,000 dollars. 236,000, 25 dollars was last year's budget. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Any further questions, Mr. Shields? No, sir. Thank, Thank you for your time. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Ms. Baker. Thank you. Do we want to handle these individually as we head along to give Lori some direction? Or, Mr. Manager, I'm looking for direction here. I How think we'd better this? wait just to see where we're at at the end okay. of the day. Okay. Good enough. There. Uh, Otto, welcome, Chief Rollator. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, commissioners. Uh, come before you today to ask uh, for a budget increase for the auto fire and rescue for the sole purpose of a new main station. Uh, we've been planning this for many years as we just purchased property, drilled a well, have a septic permit on file, and had some of the grading work done all without any budget increase. Also in preparation, we paid off our substation, trying to offset any increase to the budget. Um, <coughs> In 2002, we built an addition on the same property as what we have our main station on now, trying to increase the longevity of that building. Um, it has fully served its purpose. Uh, we house six apparatus in the Bay Areas. Um, we also built a substation to house three more apparatus to allow us to extend our coverage and bring more structures into the <coughs> insurance rated five and six mile districts. Um, in 2003, we dropped to a class seven insurance rating and then in 2011, we dropped to a class six. And then again in 2020, we dropped to a class four. Um, with these reductions, property owners save between $100 and $200 decrease on their insurance premiums annually. And we have the fourth largest district and the third highest population in Macon County. We still have areas that are not covered inside of our six mile district and are in process with Raymond County to cover some of those areas to give citizens a better insurance rate. Um, we strive to provide the highest quality service while trying to keep costs to the taxpayers as low as possible. The national average for fire protection is between $170 to $180 per household. Our average cost before the proposed increase is $98 per structure. With the proposed increase, it would be an average of $206 a structure. Uh, the request will increase the district millage rate from a .0684 to a .1224, which is a .0. 544 difference. Still not the highest millage rate in the county. We would also like for you to keep in mind that Buncombe County is an average millage rate of 0.1274 for fire protection for the same services that Macon County Fire Departments provide. The Macon County average with the auto increase is 0.0749. In 2019, we ran 528 calls for service and then 485 in 2020. The slight reduction is due to the state COVID response protocols in which fire departments did not respond to any COVID-related calls through most of the year. Um, with the 2020 calls, that brings our cost per call to $1,235 a call. Um, with the increased number of calls to service, we are in dire need of a station to house our growing equipment, apparatus, and personnel. As of now, we had to purchase an outside storage building to house our command post and other portable equipment as we are out of room in our current station. Due to the outdated old section of the main station, we cannot fit most of the newer apparatus due to the 10-foot bay doors, which means we have to strategically place all of our apparatus 
we have three trucks that will not fit in the building at all. Unfortunately, with the decreasing number of volunteers and the increase of truck size, this station will not serve us much longer into the future. In 2017, the Macon County Fire Protection Study, it is recommended that main stations have a 40-year lifespan. Um, our st station was built in 1980, and also in that same study, 19% of the citizens think that they're getting a bargain on fire tax or would pay a higher tax for better service. Also had a lot of people want more career staffing at every fire department in Macon County. Um, more issues we're facing with current station is there not adequate storage for equipment or supplies. Roofs on both buildings leak and need attention. Do, during heavy rainstorms, water runs into the bay areas of both buildings, causing us to relocate the equipment stored in those areas. We do not own any of the buildings on the property where the main station is located. We do hold a long-term lease on the area we occupy. Also have no area to house overnight stays, whether it be paid staff or volunteers for special related events. Neither building will meet building code to offer housing without major innovation or, and the addition of a sprinkler system. We do realize this is a hefty increase and we have diligently worked to keep our budget low in previous years by the use of grants and trying to find the best equipment for the best rate possible. We also did not pay volunteers until we received a safer grant through FEMA for recruitment and retention. We've received $441,000 in grants in the last eight years. We've also made several cuts to the building plan, talked with Macon County EMS about renting space, talked to numerous banks to help us offset some of the annual payment of the building. This, this station is the future for, for the southern end of Macon County as it will meet the need to house fire and rescue protection for many years to come without any need of any renovation. It will be able to house up to eight firefighters overnight at any given time, be able to house all the apparatus needed in the heated bay area, and allow plenty of storage for all equipment. Also provide a workout room and proper areas for decon and sleeping quarters. In the design of the station, we planned it for the future. Um, this decision to do this and ask for this increase did not come easy, as I'm sure yours won't either. We all live in the auto community and will affect our tax rates as well. We are looking into the possibility of building insurance companies, get a better donation program, and more grants to offset any further budget increases. We did hold two public hearings on budget increase with one person attending each one. Both parties were in favor. Um, we did a community newsletter and had positive response for the increase. Um, and I did bring our architect with us, Odell Thompson, for any questions on the building. Um, is there anything on that part that y'all would like, and I have the plans or pictures if y'all would like to see those. How many square feet? Uh, under roof, we got uh, 16,420 square feet. Heated? Nope. How much heated? Uh, heated, uh, let's see, uh, 5,085 square feet are sprinkled, and 23,32 are unsprinkled. And then we've got uh, 6396 truck bays. Say that last number again. I wasn't paying attention. 6396 square feet of truck bays. Yeah, they'll be heated. How many trucks? How many engines? How many engines? Right now we have 11. Chief Roller, uh, please help me refresh my memory. I know you've been here before. It seems like we might have declined the tax increase. Last year. Was it last year? Last year. Okay. I know because I remember seeing this prior. Yeah. The same building last year when we come to propose it was $3.7 million. This, this year it's 5.4. <laughs> uh, 5.2. 5.2. Increase in the building. What happens to the old building you're in now? We are, that's actually part of that. Uh, so when we talked to the banks, the annual loan payment was going to be about $304,000 a year. And actually what we're requesting right now is $265,000 a year because we're going to take and rent that old space of the building. Hopefully rent it out. Um, I know EMS is looking at it. We'll rent it to them and use that money to offset 
some of the building payment as well. So what happens to the October community building? It stays there, stays the same. What about the roof that's leaking now? It's not our building. So it's up to them to do all that? They own it. Y'all don't contribute to their insurance or nothing? No. On that, on that building, you just use the building? We use the building and we pay a renter's insurance. We but did try to you, offer a deal to them. The community to, club. Huh? You don't pay nothing to the community club. We rent the building and we pay our part of the maintenance. We did offer a deal to them to take over the property and take over all the maintenance of the property and they've yet to come back with an answer. No, they, they have no money. They're just like everybody else. But the roof's got to be repaired. Boston West is getting ready to put a lot of equipment in that building. I also talked to Boston West about renting the space in this new station for them to put their equipment. And they got to have a roof. You can't be leaking on that stuff, I wouldn't think. I wouldn't think so either. I wouldn't want my stuff getting no. rained on. Uh, that's field. part of the community club. That's nothing. Yeah, that's their building. Yeah, we've we've been talked to about it. Chief Relator, y'all have uh, been skimming by with one of the lower tax rates uh, in the county for several years. I know you were here last year for one. Um, uh, do, do you feel like you? And I don't disagree with the fact that you don't need a tax increase. Do you feel like you can't? You, you have to go with this massive of one. I mean, that's almost a. I mean, I, I don't. I haven't looked at just off the top of my head. That's almost an eighty percent tax. I mean, that's tremendous. It's huge. Can you not swing it with? I mean, I understand we declined last year, but can you not um, swing it with a, a more minimal tax rate to swing through. Uh, are you? Are you expecting once you get this paid for, you're going to decrease your tax rate, which is what's this is paid for? We could take and drop it down, but I mean that that's. Uh, that's 30, 20, 30 years in the future once this payment's paid off. Unfortunately, that is the full price. Well, it's not even full price of the loan payment. Um, we're taking our donation line item and we're taking $15,000 out of our budget right now that we've took out of it um, to help pay this annual payment plus whatever we get from rent from the station we're in now sure. to pay for that. Um, and then we also have $100,000 set over in a building fund right now that we're going to use to offset the overall cost. So hopefully that fee will pay the architect fees and so on and so forth. So it'll just be the $3.2 million. Um, as of right now, a bank will only do on a commercial building 20 year loan. We're trying to, there's, uh, we're working with a bank um, right now. They're looking at doing a 30 year loan, which will bring that rate on down to get it to where we can manage it. Uh, you mentioned you'd had two public uh, uh, comments. Did you advertise those in the paper? Yes, sir. Okay. Both of them was advertised in the paper. Okay. Okay. Terry, this is the property right on the right before you were the old before the, the old school. Shop was. Yes, sir. Right there, the old welding shop, same property. It's all tied in. Yes, sir. And you look like you got plenty of room. I know there's a big bank behind it, but you do have room for expansion. Yes, sir in the future if you if needed right hopefully with that there'll be no expansion needed it, it's there because that was what we didn't want to get into is we ran into it with our main station now is it didn't service life and we had that go and ask for an increase to do an addition we don't want to do that halfway through this we want it all to be there and you it's ready farming, we have 31 members right now um three juniors and two career staff. One. Good job. Good job. Any further questions, Mr. Higgins? Oh, I appreciate you coming again last year. I thought it was more than three. It's 3.7 last year, yes, sir. And I talked, I think you already tell it about scaling down some, because that's a big lick, and you know you. I agree. You know, it, it's I, a lot. It, uh, that's, uh, Unfortunately, from the trend from last year to this year, it ain't getting no cheaper either, so. That runs out about what three hundred thirty-seven dollars a square foot. Yes, sir. Three fifty-four, actually. Three fifty-four. Yep. Uh, the prices last year was two twenty-five to two fifty a square foot. He, he, I mean, you're you cramped. You, you know what do you do, man? It's just and. and and if you look at the plan, we also moved our outside storage building down there too to help still put stuff outside and not add room to. It's just, it's just, it's a tough call. 
I, I don't argue that. That's why y'all make you know, it. My stance on taxes, man, it's just, uh, like you said, like Dwight said, fuel going up over a dollar a gallon. And you guys have to run off of that, live off of it. We do too, all of us business, but, you know, we're, we're, we're suffering the same things. And uh, the uncertainty with the federal tax codes coming out is just absolutely mind-boggling. And to raise just autos... Taxes, you know, a nickel. And you know, and not that this makes for a hill of beans, but Highland Station was over $4 million. But with their overall district evaluation, their tax rate wasn't as high to build the same quality station. Yeah. And you mentioned there, you know, and I'm trying to tailor and design these things for sleeping quarters and. Something we got to have. Well. But we've got to realize that there is no way that Macon County residents can afford 12 full-time fire departments in Macon County. I agree, and I'm not arguing with you, but can they afford no fire protection? I've got 12 members right now that have their 20-year service could walk out the door tonight when I get there for fire meeting. Well, They're retired, paid in full. Gonna, how, how are you going to use sleeping quarters to recruit new fire? You, well, some people use what they call a community live-in program. They let people that's going to college, like these people are coming in to going to park service at SCC and so on, other classes. They let them live there rent free to run calls. Interesting concept. I hadn't heard that. It's pretty big down on the eastern part of the state, around Charlotte, places where there's bigger schools. People come in to go to college. Uh, they let the college students live there rent free and run calls for them. But you agree that we could not, the residents could not afford twelve. Fully staffed fire departments. I agree, but it's something we need to look at affording because it's it's coming, uh, and you need to look at it pretty quick. I'd say within the next five to six years, because there's no more coming through the door. You don't have volunteers coming through the door. People don't have time. Different generation, Terry. It's still the best deal this county's got. If you, fire. I'm not arguing. If you look oh, at the study in 2017. Seventy percent of the people surveyed said they would not volunteer because they didn't have time. Different time. And that was in 2017. That was four years ago. And there'll have to be options looked at to maintain rural fire departments. I, you know, what? That, that's an interesting concept. I've not heard that. But but just to sit here and blank and say, hey, we're going to have 12 full-time, full-staffed or whatever departments, that's that's a tough lick. I mean, that may be the that may be the end game. I don't know. And I think we certainly need to discuss it. But this is, this is a, there's never a good time for a tax increase in my mind. I'm not the full board, but uh, particularly this is not a good time at all. Like sure wasn't either. You, you keep hearing the same thing when you come. And, uh, we'll keep you know. coming. Huh? We'll keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see my smiling face every year. Well, I'm, I'm impressed with you young gentlemen that are committed to, the, to serving your community. I'm, 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 I've tried it for a few years, and I was just I was too busy. And, uh, and see, even myself, I've been at it since 98, yeah. so I could actually retire within the next year or two. Yeah. So, so I live Thank in you, Terry. Yes, sir. I live in Otto, and uh, I do. I do appreciate more than what you guys, men and women, more than what you realize, what you do for us. And it's, it's, I don't have the time again, and uh, you guys put your life on the line for us every day. The number, I mean, the five million dollar number is, is what's really intimidating. You know, like there's no doubt, as Mr. Tate says, you, you need you know, better facilities. But, you know, we just built that. That metal structure on 441. Yes, sir. I mean, I'm not scared to tell you it was a couple of years ago, but we built 24 feet high. It's it's a fraction of the size of this. We came in at 225,000. We have three rooms, two bathrooms, a, a mezzanine. You know, so I just I think we just kind of need to scale back to where maybe we don't have all the bells and whistles and all. Like, there's no doubt you need it, but you know, I, I heard you reference Asheville and Highlands. I mean, this is Otto. I'm not saying there are any any you know, better or worse, I'm saying we don't have the, the, the population and the, the hey. funding. So I, I think we need something. This this is uh, this is intimidating. But, that's uh, actually on the lower end. We did not put a lot of bells and whistles into that. Um, that's not your high dollar sheet rock and so on and so forth and brick four lay like Highland stations or Asheville stations. That's actually a metal building, metal frame building, red iron. And they're putting insulated panels on the outside where it's metal on the outside, insulation in between and metal on the inside, and that's what will go up. I mean, um, it's not high dollar. 
just, just asking, I'm not a contractor, but is there a way to kind of break this down maybe with the breezeway where you can stay under, is it 5,000 square feet just to not have to have sprinkler system? We did. We All put in crazy. Yeah, we know. put in firewalls. The only area that's sprinkled is the living quarters to cut down on the cost of the uh, sprinkler system. Part of the problem with the sprinkler system is we're not tied into city water. Um, you're required by building code. If they're sleeping there, if it's living quarters, you have to have that. So we have to put in pumps and tanks and all that to be able to accommodate that sprinkler system. Um, where if we did have city water or public water out there, we wouldn't have to put all that in. Um, but we did in the Bay areas, we put in firewalls where we don't have to sprinkle that. It's part of living in a rural community. So like I said, I'll be, I'll be happy to you know, kind of come to a meeting and talk to you guys. I just, I want to see this number. It's just, this is just, just a little much for me. And, and like I said, it was 3.7 last year. I can't help the cost of building increase. You know, that's, that's materials. Have you had actual contractors look at it and give you a quote? Yes. Yeah, actually. Recent? Yep. Yes. I talked to Warren and he said that his metal building, he sells metal buildings for a living. He said that his cost since January went up 43% just on the metal building itself. He recommended... We done a 25% increase at the first re redo. After talking to him, he recommended we do at least another 20 to 25% because he had no clue where building materials were going. Terry, I believe uh, from the information you've got here, you all have involved your community, and they seem to be in support. Yes, sir. What you're asking for here. Out of the newsletter we sent back, there was only two negative comments for it. One was uh, opposed because it didn't help her old Mulberry, where she lived at. But we have, we're looking at striking a deal with Rayburn County to get them covered to where they're in a six-mile district to help them on their insurance rates. So what I'm reading here, your community that you serve is in support of what you're presenting here. For the most part, yes, sir, from what we've gathered by uh, most of it was just non-responses, but from what we got back, they were less positive. Yes, sir. That community's getting the broadband. It's going to increase more business-wise and homes. Yes, sir. It's, uh, appreciate all your work. Thank you. And, and your leadership. And we have to be careful just for the board and for just knowing a little bit about it that, yes, you can come in here and try to cut that bill down to X amount of dollars and say we'll add on to it later. It's like buying a car with no fenders. You're going to put fenders on it. That's and right. You're going to have to expand it. And it costs a whole lot more the second go around. What's it going to cost four years from now? Yep. That's what you have to think about. And as this county continues to grow, and it will, that community especially. Well, I mean, everything, well, every piece of land down there sold, I reckon, mm -hmm. pretty close. So, and people's, and so it's going to expand, Terry, and hit. And your call volume. Look at your call volume. I looked at your call volume. It's went up tremendously. Yeah, even during COVID. Mm -hmm. And uh, most most of the calls, uh, Warren will tell you that during COVID, a lot of the calls went down. Ours actually increased. Yours increased. So uh, that's what it's all about. When they when they pick up that phone, dial 911, look for the fire department. Have you ever had anybody say, my tax rate's too high, don't come? No, no, sir. Never hear the word about that. And, and, you know, with that being said, too, a lot of people that move here from different locations, they expect the same level of service that they got. Well, they got better here than they had, guaranteed. So we still have to maintain a level of standardization service across the board that they receive anywhere. What grade are you in this Four. Great. Good job with that. Any further questions? Josh, would you like to catch up with him? I'll do so. Yes, sir. So we, we have shared a couple emails. And yes, sir. I spoke with the gentleman today. I got your number as well from him. So, okay. Uh, Anytime. Anytime you have a meeting, I, I'd love to be there and, and go through you know, more in depth. And I'd ha be happy to bring more to the board just kind of show the efforts that we're okay. taking and more of the scale of that building. But that's it. I, I want something. Just, and I understand it's, it's crazy where this world's going right now. I agree. Appreciate y'all's time. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Terry. All right, I see you at Forward North Carolina Forest Service here. Would you like to? Warren, did you have any comments on these? You good? Um, 
Sure. Just Sorry, just one second. Uh, the two things that y'all mentioned obviously were in that fire study, the, the combined maintenance contract with an outside agency or use of the county maintenance staff. So that's something that we looked at in 17 that was the part of the steps that we were looking at trying to fix. So that's something that, like he mentioned, is on our radar to try and see if we can do something with. I do agree with Terry. His building is one of the oldest ones that's out there. So that's why we identified it back then in the now and Park Chapel. That was two of the oldest buildings. They, they were the first two rural fire departments in Lincoln County. Uh, so they obviously have the oldest building. So they, they hit that nail on the head. Um, you heard him mention EMS. One of the things that we looked at was, particularly when the Highland Road was shut down with maintenance, we moved the truck down to Otto during the daytime. And, and we did that so when the truck in Highland, when our ambulance in Highland has a call, we chase it with a truck from Franklin to make sure that our availability is still there. If the next person picks up the phone and calls 911. So we, we run this constant circle between Franklin and Highland and Franklin and Anahala. And what we found was that when we moved that truck to Otto, number one, we helped Mulberry, uh, Wallwood Gap, those places down there that are, that are hard to get to. And in some cases, we drive past uh, Raven County EMS to get to some of those places. Um, so usually we'll send them instead of us. We'll go to, we'll send them first. So we, we realized that was a really good location. Plus it helped us with our backup calls in, in Highlands uh, because we could either take the load off some of the stuff and scale them out and then let Highlands stay available if we came from Otto or it saved us a little time going up that way. So that was a really good location. We were, we were doing some informal talks with them. What happens to the, what they call the new part of their building, that there's the older fire department, which is the community club that, that you're talking about there. Then you have the two bay or the three bay metal building right there. That's the newer part the fire department actually owns. Um, we were talking to them, what, what are you gonna do with this building when you get done? Because that's an ideal place for us. Um, so that's why we were trying to figure out that way, if, if they were to move out, that building is not wasted, it's repurposed. And then even if we leased it or something, that would help them offset their payment on their building. It would get us what we needed without us having to build a building and kind of spread the money out over something. But that was all in the planning process. A lot of that hinged on what happened with their new building. Because right now we can't, we can't go there 24 hours because they don't have the sleeping quarters. We, we don't have the night quarters to legitimately put somebody there. We could do daytime, we have to park outside, um, but we could do daytime right now. So that, that was kind of part of the picture we were looking at from our area. Ms. Edwards, welcome. <laughs> Before you start, uh, no, you can, you can come on up. I'll, I'll speak to you uh, as well, just so you know, I think it's your first time in here in front of us with a budget, but, uh, and I'll explain why, you're, why, why I presume you're here. So our, our county manager has uh, a set of funds from our revenues. And he's got a number that he uses, and he tries to work in everything that needs to partake in Macon County, all the expenses within that number. Uh, he can't go over it because if he goes over it, that requires a tax increase, which comes back to us for it to happen. So uh, he, he, his hands are tied. Uh, his neck sort of in a noose of what he can do and can't do, and he has to try and get everything that he can in for that finite amount of money uh, to the best of his abilities. So uh, I presume you're here because I saw in the report that y'all asked for a minimal uh, increase in your funds. County manager recommended that he keeps it flat, which I'm sure he'll, he'll explain his reasoning after we hear from you. But I just want everybody to know, uh, some, sometimes I happen. Sometimes he, he requests a decrease. He's doing the best best he can, but uh, there shouldn't anybody ever be upset with Derek or their county manager for what he does uh, and, and what he has to put up with for uh, trying to do the best for things. <laughs> yeah. He definitely doesn't ignore anybody. So thank you, Ms. Edwards. Welcome. Thank you. Um, and I guess I wanted to start out by thanking you all for your support over the years. Um, I know we've had a good working relationship with uh, Macon County in the past, and we look forward to that going forward as we work through budget issues and that kind of thing. Um, I know we're not alone. Um, we, I gave you all a printout of our proposed budget for this year. Um, and last year we also were held flat. Um, and in fact, I could only go back to 2014 um, in our program and we have had the same budget, 175,000 for Macon County since 2014. Um, so what that's meant for us is that as our 
salaries increase and that kind of thing, I'm having to pull appropriations out of my operating expense to cover the salary. And I'm at a point now where I don't have any more money. I'm, I'm out. I'm tapped out. I can't. If, you know, to get to the nitty gritty pretty quick, um, if I am held to a capped out county portion of 70000 I will have $16,000 to operate my office. That includes gasoline, it includes diesel, it includes oil changes, it includes truck maintenance, it includes the light bill, and I simply cannot do that. I mean, that's $1,300 a month. I mean, y'all know <laughs> you can't run an office on $1,300 a month. So, anyhow, I know that in the past um, we have turned money back, so to speak. I think Derek and I talked about that some last year. Um, the last sheet on the printout is um, our total authorized budget. Our authorized salary, the salary that we spent, and if we don't spend salary, it's because we're having turnover and vacancies, and it happens. Um, and then what's left, as we call in the state budget terms, is lap salary. That lap salary goes back to Raleigh. I'm not allowed to touch that. Um, and then I also have on here authorized non-salary, non-salary spent and unspent operating. We did have unspent operating last year. Um, we were given a no more spending on March 1st with COVID. So we were down to don't drive your truck, don't go anywhere unless you are responding to a fire call. So that's four months of operating that we didn't spend last year because of that. So, um, you know, there's other things too that Macon County doesn't get billed for. We have uh, myself, an assistant district forester, a service forester, a district ranger FM, a district ranger law enforcement officer, um, two bulldozers, a RACO, an IC-35. Um, we have three scout planes in Hickory, two helicopters. Um, when we use those on fires in Macon County, Macon County does not get billed for those expenses. And that's because we have this arrangement and this contract. So, y'all are getting a good bang for your buck. We put a helicopter on a fire in Macon County, um, Cow's Cove. It did 100 bucket drops in one day. The bill on that would have been $50,000. So. Remind me of your, uh, yes. what you were requesting, what we, just save me a little bit. Bigger sure, now, absolutely. So, and I can walk through it um, line by line if y'all would like. Yeah. Details, okay. <laughs> you don't want the, the details? Give us the, the helicopter. <laughs> We're asking for the county portion to be 78490 That's an increase of $8,490. From you. Okay. Mr. Manager. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I definitely agree. <laughs> we do get a great, a great bang for our buck. Um, I look back at our county appropriations and, uh, as you had mentioned, the, the remaining funds at the end of the year. And going back uh, to 2015, when you look at, uh, let's look at 2015, there was the county appropriation was $70,000 in that year. There was $4,662 that remained unspent. In 2016, the county appropriation was $70,000. There was $8,989 that remained unspent. In 2017, the budget was amended to cover infrastructure repairs to $74,800. Again, in 2017, and there was $14,046 remaining unspent at the end of that fiscal year. In 2018, we amended the budget to 86000 to cover a $16,000 uh, hour contribution on the purchase of a truck. And in 2018, in that year, there was $15,458 remaining unspent at the end of the fiscal year. In 2019, appropriation was again $70,000. Uh, there was $8,802 in that year that remained unspent. And in 2020, we again amended the budget from 92 or to 92,748. That was additional $22,000 to cover an additional vehicle. And at the end of that fiscal year, there was uh, $21,013 that remains un that remained unspent at the end of the fiscal year. So just in 2015 through 2020, there's a total of $72,970 or about $12,162 that's left on the table annually. Uh, at the end of the fiscal year. So I'm just, ha uh, you know, as the chairman said, it's a very tight budget. And, and you know, if there's some way that uh, that we can work uh, to get some of these this money cleared off the table at, at the at the end of the fiscal year, but but I can't 
um, looking at these remaining balances at the end of each fiscal year, again, going back to the, in the past five years, from 2020 to 2015, we're talking about $72,970. So, again, if, we, if there was some way that we can find... How much is that salary? Um, that's just what the county gives you, that annual appropriation, and then our We don't track it by salary. We don't, we don't have we don't track it by your expenses. That's just what's in our accounting system. Well, and I guess that's why I did this as I did. The majority of the funds that we have on the books that's turned back as salary, and I can't move well, that, that to would, operating. The, the county funds, um, all we do with this appropriation, I mean, and if there's, you know, if there's any way that if this... $15,458, that's county money in, in, in 2018, or the, the 21000 that was left in 2020, that's county money. If there's some way we could work out to uh, to get those funds to you, we'd be happy to write you a check, because <laughs> when we give you that $70,000 appropriation, we intend, we intend for it to be spent by the North Carolina Forest Service. Right, and I have, I have to cover this coming year. 158000 in change in, in salary, and I can't move that appropriation to operating at all. So your portion of that I can't use for anything else. So if it reserve. gets, if it's not spent because I have a vacancy, then you're just not going to get billed for it, and it's being left on the table, yes, but I cannot move that below the line to operating. There was two unfunded mandates come down from the state passed along to the county, passed along the North Carolina Forest Service that I'm aware of. It could have been 22 of them during this legislature. But uh, there's two unfunded mandates for sure that came down uh, that the county we had to go back and pick up. That's from 2018. Okay. So uh, one of them is the, is the uh, retirement plan mm -hmm. that comes out. But the county has to pay. The state mandated it, but it's up to us and your budget from the county to pay. That's number one. Number two was your insurance. Right. So that's all unfunded mandates that's not reflective in the numbers that Derek shared. Uh, I'm not saying that hit, I'm just saying that that needs to be taken into account. Sure. You're dealing with, un, we are dealing with unfunded mandates from the state legislature that are passed to you and you just have X amount of dollars. Right. And you, you have very limited on what you can do with your money. You very. are very, very limited. Very. We want to do a truck. Maybe it's 10 years ago. I remember. I, I was going to say, do I need to tell y'all now there's going to be a truck in the budget next year or should we hold off and wait, and wait on that? <laughs> yeah. Should, yeah. should I go ahead and start truck. greasing that wheel now? Or? <laughs> uh, through, through May 28th of this year, there's $29,438 left. We could probably go ahead and buy it. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, a lot of that, arrears, the so salary money is for the truck, yes. right? <laughs> I'm sorry. The salary money. That's yes, where sir. the problem is. The money is, yes, that number is <laughs> dictated to me. I can't change it and I can't move that. I can't play with it if and I you have, can't take if I have a vacant. dollars and supplement it. Correct. I can't move. I cannot move with that stuff that's above the line in, in, in the budget. I just can't. I cannot play with it at all. So. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Do y'all have any questions? And, and I guess, too, for perspective, the other. And I don't know if it matters or not, but um, Haywood, Jackson County, my operating budget with them is in the 50s, 50,000 range. So we're very underfunded in Macon County. So then you're asking for, did I hear you right, 8,000 total? Right shot that, in yes, addition? sir. Yes, sir. Going to 78,000. What did you just say, Jackson County? Uh, they're um, operating only. Oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know <laughs> What is their total contribution? Ooh, I don't know or that, but I can find out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But they're a similar county. They're a three a three person county, and and I brought them with me. Y'all probably all know B.J. Keener. He's your county ranger, and Adam Robbins is a new assistant county ranger, and he's joined us. For, he was a deputy with Caldwell County, and is now the assistant county ranger. So. Lori, can if we ever get our pilt money, <laughs> would this be a good place to earmark some of that? It's earmarked for school, is it? Well, the no pilt money, money is already part of our budget. Yeah. So, I mean, would that be it's payment in lieu of taxes for the Forest Service <laughs> land? So, I mean, it, for federal lands. Right. So, and we've tried to get that as a line item budget in the federal, but can't get it happen. So, it's, and it's, we ain't got our money this year, have we, Lord? That news. Not yet. It usually Not comes yet. in June. So. But it, that's 
hopefully it comes. 400 grand or something, 350. Yeah. Well, again, that's already built into our budget, though. Yeah. I mean, it's already part of the revenues we've proposed. We can set it out of that. I would like, and also my um, my boss, the regional forester, was not able to come today. He's down east on the severity team for their drought situation. But um, if you all are not going to recommend an increase in our budget, um, he and the state forester would like to have an opportunity to come talk to you all about what our budget and services will be under what's what Derek and, and you all are recommending. So. Thank you. Sure, Derek, that money you're talking about, that Seven thousand dollars that you guys can't use. Is there, where does the money go if it's not spent? Rolls in the fund balance. It goes in the fund balance. But we already have that money budgeted for. Yeah, it's appropriated to the Forest Service. Every year we appropriate them seventy thousand dollars, and since twenty fifteen, there's been about twelve thousand one hundred sixty two dollars a year that remains unspent. So. Well, I have a problem. Give it to you. We'll give it back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope not. Okay, I think my staff is stable now. Thanks. That <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> it, would be, it would be fund balance, Ronnie. Your yeah. question. It's, I mean, it's back in fund it's balance. It's going to roll into fund balance. You could appropriate fund balance in the upcoming year for eighty four ninety if you wanted to. Yeah. Because yeah, I mean, their unspent money is just going to roll into our fund balance. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. If there was something like that, I mean, you know, that works out great. Because it don't. It's really not practical to just write them a check for the what's left on the table. I don't, I don't think I can. I can't. <laughs> the way it's set up, I get an invoice each month that shows all of their expenditures, and then it bills the county for forty percent. So you know we're paying on actual expenditures. So, um, and the, the twenty-something thousand dollar number that's remaining now, we still have a few months because, again, they bill they bill in arrears, and we, I still have a few months to pay them. But yeah, they're definitely going to probably be eight to ten thousand left on the table. At the this year. Yeah, I think I right now. To, you could appropriate the fund balance in next year to cover this increase. Yeah, I have. Thank you, Lauren. You know. Gosh, yeah. the numbers are all through your heads. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Sure, <laughs> absolutely. Have you recovered from the fires? You know, the Forest Service hadn't even recovered from the drought fires that we had. Uh, has, has the Forest Service, the state would not allocate to replenish the funds for four years. And that's been how many years ago now? When was the, all the fire? 16, 2016. Huh? Yeah, we're doing Last another, year, another. The replacement funds. So, uh, and you ain't gonna get it. That's just the way it is. So, that's another reason that uh, that you're hurting. Mm -hmm. Yep. We'll work on that your next trip, Ronnie. <laughs> uh, Thank you. We'll work on that your next trip, then. All right. No. Okay. Well, okay, if they got no fish, you we'll clean it. Anything else for fire departments or forest service? Pretty good. All right, let's move on to school system budget discussion. Dr. Baldwin, do you have questions after seeing the county managers? No, sir. Have you all had I, discussions or are we? I have. We have. Where, where do we go from here? Um, <laughs> we had them leading up to the budget. None since the. Right. Oh, I didn't know if y'all met. Not since, since his recommended budget. Okay. No, okay. Sure. Good. Um, Do you have questions, thoughts? Do we have questions I'll for you? Just, so. um, if, if you got just a few minutes, I'll, sure, no, I'll no, go no, over um, the here. reasons it's, for it's our a request. Huge, huge item in our budget. Absolutely, I understand. So, yeah. And uh, certainly appreciate the opportunity to present our projected needs mm -hmm. for uh, school year 21-22. Mm -hmm. uh, and as Derek pointed out during his recommended budget presentation, there are a lot of uncertainties around um, fiscal year 21-22's budget. Um, you know, we don't know where the state budget's going to land at this point. Um, will there be associated uh, salary increases for our employees? Will there be benefit increase, increases for our employees? Will be there? Will there be additional teacher allotments from the state? Um, you know, we simply don't know these things at this time. Um, we do know that uh, we have a significant increase in federal funding this school year um, that has to be spent by December of 2024. Um, where there's a lot of uncertainties about how that money can be or should be spent that we've got to work through. Um, but along with all those uncertainties, we do know that there are some certainties as well. And um, a lot of that is around the pandemic. Um, we know that there are significant academic uh, losses as a result of what this school system and every school system across the nation went through over the past 15, 16 months. 
um, and our budget request uh, reflects um, those needs and how we would, how we would attempt to address some of those needs. Um, obviously, our focus is going to be academic losses that are associated with kids not being in school and um, being at home and virtual learning and, and all that uh, goes along with that. But we also know that before we can begin to address the academic losses, we have to address the social and emotional needs that, that have been impacted by kids being away from school, uh, parents and kids being together uh, for 15 or 16 months and trying to um, get through virtual learning with parents not being able to work and, and those sorts of things. So we know that we're going to have to work through a lot of that. Um, and, and our budget request with regard to the mental health professionals um, goes towards addressing those needs. Um, both the Board of Education and the County Commissioners have heard from our community about how important um, the arts are to our community. Um, and I believe that we all agree that the arts are important. Um, we also know, as Ronnie pointed out at, at um, a recent Commissioner's meeting, that, that you know, NAMI understands that, uh, and NAMI I think is the National Association of Mental Illness. Um, they understand the importance of music and art in addressing mental illness and mental health needs. Um, so our, our budget request for the art positions, music and art positions, request or it, that reflects our understanding of how important the arts are, uh, not only to the academic needs, but the social and emotional learning needs of students. So um, we know that there's a need there. It's a matter of how do we fund those positions. Um, our, our request also um, pointed out the K-3 class size legislation, how that's impacted our school system since 2016-17. Um, basically, what we're trying to do with that is make you aware of where additional teaching positions have gone over the past four or five years in, in Macon County Schools. We've had to hire 15 additional K-3 uh, teachers as a result of that K-3 class size legislation. Now, some of those have been offset by program enhancement positions from the state, but not all of them. Some of those positions have also been offset by the geographically isolated schools bill that um, Senator Davis and Representative Corbin were able to get passed a few years ago. Um, but those things have impacted our budget as well. Um, normally, we would have used those positions to fund, perhaps, music and art. Um, they've gone to K-3 positions. Um, so our budget, yes, that is uh, obviously a, a huge impact to your budget. We understand that. It's a 16% increase roughly um, in, in what you've been providing us. Um, we appreciate the support that this commission, Board of Commissioners has given us over the years. Um, it's obviously very important to our students and, and to our community. Now, do you all have any questions for me about our budget request and moving forward? Uh, Dr. Baldwin, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult on us as commissioners because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a limited pot of money and we're divvying it out for sheriff's department, we're divvying it out for human resources, we're divvying it out for social we're, all these things. So there's a point where it comes out. You know, we would love to fund everything, but the only way we can really do that is through significant tax increase and then what are we doing to the community when we do that yes a lot of people uh, tax increase it doesn't bother that much but a lot of people a tax increase it does bother so I, I know you appreciate that I do I was chuckling up here a minute ago because since I've been a commissioner every year uh, we, we never know what the state's going to do uh, and it's the same thing every year y'all y'all are walking blind uh, every budget year we've been here uh, walking in wondering what we're going to do wondering what the state's going to do and uh, every year we, we tend to make it through with what we're doing so uh, you mentioned to, that you have a, a good amount of money coming to the federal government this year uh, uh, it has to be spent like it sounds like in three years from now two years from mm -hmm. now that's correct uh, if uh, i understand the art positions is, is there opportunity you said you i heard you also say that you don't know how that money can be spent yet is there opportunity uh, within your board to, for y'all to make decisions to perhaps uh, supplement your capital expenditures, your capital issues with that, your repairs, whatever it might be, and then take some of our funds and roll them into those positions. I know you're taking a gamble 
for two years, three years to pay for those new positions that you're needing. Well, but you also have additional money coming in that you might be able to. Again, I don't know how y'all do it, but to it, me, it, it seems logical. It, it, it might get you two. It might get us two to three years down the road. So. I think it would be probably more appropriate for us to um, utilize the ESSER funding for capital projects because of, of the, um, uh, the the guidelines that we've been given at this point. Basically, we're we're to follow three uh, rules, and that is: is it allowable? Does it align with the uses outlined in law? Is it reasonable? Is it most cost effective? And is it necessary? And, and that part is um, the part that we've got to work through because the three things that um, that are required is it must be linked to a reduction of, a prevention of, or a response to COVID-19. Now, based on some of the guidelines that we've received at this point is that it does look appear that we can um, enter into construction projects. And one of the things that we have uh, proposed is building uh, a six classroom addition at East Franklin. Um, and we're trying to tie that into the COVID uh, response due to the limited space at East Franklin. I mean, we've, gotcha. got, we, we've got kids that are um, receiving tutoring services and stairwells. Those are poorly ventilated. Um, if we had additional space, um, we could reduce hopefully reduce the uh, spread of COVID-19 or, or uh, diseases similar to that. And obviously, the um, East Franklin is one of the only schools, is the only elementary school in the Franklin area that doesn't have a pre-K program. Um, and that's due to the lack of classroom space over there. So that would allow us to address some of the uh, family needs that have been uh, have arisen as a result of COVID-19. So that's what we're trying to do with that. now. Unfortunately, that was kicked back. That request was denied in our first application. Now, we're going to reapply, and we're going to use a lot more of the uh, evidence that we have uh, from East Franklin that are associated with COVID-19. We're also going to um, upgrade technology um, through our ESSER allotment, or we at least <laughs> we're hoping that we'll be able to do that. And a lot of that is pending our application process at this point. You understand what I was mentioning though about us because it's just a simple stroke of the pen for us to move it from capital to operational. Well, but the thing with that, if we do that though, is if, if, if presuming you can use that, that funds for capital expenditures, is it, so it, what it, we it can ham, it hamstrings us down the road. Sure. Well, so then we're going to be a call, hang, hang, hanging those well, those operational business, and then you're going to be back looking to us for capital as well. Right. I see it as a temporary solution. Well, and now, and with that regard. We can also use the ESSER funding for the mental health professionals, the art positions, as long as we can meet that three-pronged uh, sure. requirement. Okay. And, we, and we feel like that those are, based on what NAMI has said about music and art, um, and obviously the mental health professionals, we, we feel that those are allowable expenditures. Okay. However, and it, that's, that's my point, you know, now... Well, it goes away, but at the same, this is a little different than our Sorry. funding that we received back in 2010-11. You know, that, that money really didn't have uh, a lot of guidelines associated with it. This is specific. Will those positions address a response to COVID-19? Yes, they will. That money is expected to be spent on addressing COVID-19 and its impact. Sure. So... It's an allowable expenditure, but once we go down that path, at some point that money runs out, I doubt That's that right. anyone's going to lose those positions at that time. And as long as everyone's on board with why we're doing that, then we feel like it's an allowable yeah, expenditure. It never goes away. I've been, I've been noodling this uh, uh, for the past several weeks, and it's, it's, a, it's a difficult uh, uh, situation. I certainly appreciate what y'all do there. Can you tell me how much y'all have in your fund balance? Uh, right now, I've... It's about 1.3 million. Okay. Good. Good. And uh, I'm just going to ask our commissioners, let's, if, for my sanity, y'all res please respect my sanity. Let's hold off on the new school discussion. We're going to get into that today, tonight. And let's hold off on that. Let's focus on y'all's budget for this year. And then we'll talk, we'll talk about the school next. Let's talk a little about the, the art program and the school nurses. Uh, in this budget, it looks like you said you, you've had to hire 15. Are you going to hire 15? We more? have um, 
We have hired 15 with them. That, is, that includes a projected additional four K-3 positions this year. This year was the big year. Um, this was the year that the law goes fully into effect, 21-22 goes fully into effect. Up until this year, we've been, um, we've had a limit of 21, the past year was 21, previous to that it was 22, before that it was a class size of 23. So it's gone down 23, 22, 21. This year, though, we cannot exceed our funding ratio, which means in uh, kindergarten, we have to uh, stay within 18 students per teacher, 16 first grade, and uh, 17 for second and third. So that's that's a drop from 21 to 18 to 16 to 17 to 17. Now we still have, uh, we can exceed those individual class size maximums by three as long as the LEA allotment doesn't go over, or the uh, LEA ratio doesn't go over the funding allotment. So it's a, it's a, it was a significant impact for us. Now, moving forward, we shouldn't see that dramatic of, a, a, of a, an issue year to year. Um, we may have to hire a, a teacher here or there, and we may be able to move a teacher to another position over uh, the coming years. But um, the other thing that has gone along with that is originally with that K-3 class size limit uh, legislation, uh, I don't think that the General Assembly fully understood how that funding was utilized. They didn't understand that it funded music and art positions in foreign language and PE. Um, after they implemented the legislation and realized that that those uh, that class size allotment funded those program enhancement positions, they reintroduced and re-implemented a plan for program enhancement positions. We've received ten and a half program enhancement positions since 2016-17. Unfortunately, we have over 15 program enhancement positions already in the in the district that were funded out of um, the classroom teacher law. So it helped. It didn't obviously those 10 and a half positions didn't address the 15 that we had. That's why that's where the geographical isolated schools allotment came in. What about the school nurses? Uh, or you know, I. I think you're going to have to be called up. They're going to be more than nurse. they got to be a mental health clinician. And they're going to be real busy. Yes, they are. They already are yep. real busy. Uh, so I think when we met the other night, you mentioned five more or five. I know now we have five now. We requested six additional. That would give us one per school. One per school. And now, the art, I, are they, how many positions did you on the art side? All right, so. And do you have room for art in every school? It's just the middle school, right? Well, we, re, we requested additional art positions at the elementaries, the middle school, and union. That was the four positions that we requested. Are they got room at all those places for art? Um, There'll be art on a cart at Kartuka J. Art on a cart? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. And also East Franklin. Um, but the other schools do have the room. Middle school, middle school for the upcoming school year is going to be a challenge with the renovations going on. Um, we'll work something out with between middle school and union. Or that's at least what we hope to do. Uh, Thank you. Every year, same thing. I don't understand what's going on here. <laughs> you really got to you got to carry Angie with you so she can explain this budget process. The way I view it is, we hire we hire Derek to negotiate with you on educational spending. We don't negotiate with teachers as we've done in the past. We don't negotiate with the school board as has been mentioned. It's him and you. And when he brings us a proposed budget. I cannot, I cannot grasp this, the stuff you're talking out there. That's not my cup of tea. That's yours, Angie's, and Derek's. Initially, when we started this year's budget process, you were recommending a flat budget? No. Your initial budget present, your initial... No, uh, back in February, I requested uh, something similar to this. It, it, we tweaked it a little bit since then based on uh, the K-3 class size 
um, needs that are projected for next year based on retentions and additional uh, students uh, depending on which grade level they're in but it, it was pretty amount? much similar to this I don't know that we had an amount associated with that at, the, oh. at that back in February or not I don't remember okay. if we did or not it was it was pretty similar to this the only difference was um, we had a more clear we we have a more clear <laughs> understanding now of the K3 <clears throat> class size legislation how that's going to impact our budget that and that's reflected at, at the bottom of our request and your COVID money how much <clears throat> how much money is the education system getting in two years on COVID um, cares act or whatever? over the next two years approximately 15 million dollars uh, how much is the county getting? Six point five. That's a lot of money in it. Multiply that across the United States. Holy cow. Trillions. We're in a hole. But man, money's everywhere. Uh, arts. Uh, it was. I, I don't do Facebook, but I was alerted that there had been a, a T-shirt brigade called together because the county manager had instructed us not to field any calls for requests never happened county manager doesn't dictate to us what we do or the calls we take so I hope this misinformation gets straightened out uh, in a minute tell me about the arts program why are we last year it was stem program i understood stem and the importance of that we picked that out we funded that this year it's uh music and arts why don't we have music and arts in school i mean we do have it in schools right mm -hmm. what yeah. are we wanting to do with it What's that? What are we wanting to do with that program? Um, we want to expand that program. And some of that is not necessarily an expansion. Some of that is a result of uh, the budget uh, reduction that we went through as a result of the recession. Um, we lost positions at Macon Middle School that were never filled. And that's where some of the request is coming from. Um, additionally, COVID has created a situation where music and art can fill in that, that mental health gap, as well as provide significant um, uh, improvements and enhancements to the academic program. That we have. Oh, absolutely. I'm a strong supporter of it. Is that not an operational function? Funding that program, staffing that program? Of the state? But the state won't do it. This, the way the state funds program enhancement at this point, and that, that has shifted since around 2016. Prior to 2016-17, when the class size limit uh, legislation was enacted, music and art was expected to come out of the, our classroom teacher allotment. Now, back in the 90s, there was a program enhancement allotment. Then they shifted all of that funding to the classroom teacher allotment and school systems were expected to fund music art pe and foreign language out of that classroom uh, teacher allotment now uh, over the years we offer uh, music and art at the elementaries uh, we offer we offered music and art at the middle school when we went through the budget reductions as a result of the recession we had to attrit positions and that depended on whether or not we had a uh, P position at MVI that, that left as a result of receiving another job offer or a retirement or a resignation for any other reason. We might have attrited a position at that school based on that being a non-core subject such as PE. Middle school happened to be art at that time. Um, I know Scotty Corbin was there for a period of time. Um, so it, it, it depended on whatever position as long as it was non-core. We tried to hold on to all of our core positions, uh, math, science, reading, language arts, that sort of thing. Um, we lost the art position at, at middle school, um, and we've never been able to fi find the funding for that. Some of that is a result of the K-3 class size legislation. Most of our positions have gone into the K-3 uh, classes since at least 17. That's still the state's responsibility, though, isn't it, to staff that? It, it depends on how you want to look at it. Um, you know, uh, constitutionally, state constitution uh, reads that the state will provide for the operation of schools. Then the lottery funds is given to us to provide for capital needs. 
Um, some school systems fund uh, considerably more in operations. Some counties fund considerably more in operations than others do. So it, it depends on how, how you want to look at it. It's a crap shoot. Yep, pretty much. Uh, let Angie figure out how to use that COVID money. Uh, 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 just a brief thing on school. On we've talked about school expansions here, and you mentioned tonight a couple of things, a couple of locations that need some expansion. Is that on paper? You're, we've we've talked about school plans. Is there a plan for what the educational system of Macon County wants to do over the next five or ten? Years? We we are required by law to submit a plan to the DPI every five years, a long range plan. We also submit that. It's required that we submit it to county manager. So, yes, we have a... Can we get a copy of that? Can I get a copy of that? I don't have it with me, but yes. Derek had a copy of it. I mean, because right now, the only debt that Macon County taxpayers have is school debt. We're about $32 million now of school debt. Uh, zero general fund, general operations debt. Uh, and we're... Well, uh, let me ask you something about that. You know... Parker Meadows was a pretty substantial uh, investment for Macon County, right? Yes. You paid that off pretty quickly. Yeah. Well, why not school debt? I mean, you made a choice there to go with Parker Meadows over school debt. I, I would not. Three of us had that choice. Not, so, not but, the whole board. So but what I'm saying there is that some of that's a choice. Million, How do you have yeah, 30, $32 million just hard to cough up overnight? It, it is hard to cough up overnight. And we messed up on Parker Meadows. I think we were getting... But, but my, I guess my point is this. Do, do you receive any dollars that must go to school construction? Uh, the lottery money? And part of the sales Which we're all the way up to 21% now. And, and the PILT, I think $300 something thousand dollars a year, yeah. Article 40 and 42? I don't see I'm not into this. I'm a ditch digger. I'm not into this. Well, a certain percentage of our sales tax has to be for school debt service related to buildings or the buildings. Yeah. And, and it is. It's flat, right? Yeah, sure. Definitely, definitely. And the lottery funds. Yeah, those two sources of revenue go help to off, you know, pay school. And the lottery funds have never exceeded. They're the highest they've ever been. And not, I said these 20 point something. Supposed to be in 40 from the get go. Those, yeah. Those which would increase that to about six hundred thousand yeah. dollars. We help. get about half what we should from lottery funds. Yeah. Those mm -hmm. help. But we couldn't we couldn't come up with fifteen, twelve, fifteen million dollars to go over and redo the no. make a middle school. No, so we, have to, we have to stretch uh, out our debt that. schedule. I understand that. And it, we just can't pay it off. And now we're we're gonna get into another discussion later, later about but so I'm just I'm just wanting to see this plan. What are, what is our what is our structural so I, brick and mortar plan? Based on memory, I can tell you that that plan that we res, that we most recently submitted included six classrooms at Cartuga J, six classrooms at East Franklin. Did, all I'm asking for is a copy of that. Yeah. Right. And and also make a middle school's renovations and Franklin High School. Yeah, just, if I can just get a copy. I don't care where it is from. If it's yeah, I, can, I can't understand all this well, other give stuff. Give me your email address. I'll send it to Pardon? you tonight. Give me your email. I'll send it to you first thing in the morning. Dr. Vaughn, you think you have the ability to, if this is funded, to fill those positions? I mean, that's DSS, a, that's that's a question. I mean, DSS that's a question that I, I think that that's going to be one of our biggest right challenges. Now. And I think that's across the board, though. Uh, Western Carolina University graduated one language arts teacher and two math or two Thank language you, arts and one math, something like that. So we're going to be in a human resources battle because all of these counties have this federal money. All these school systems have this federal money, and they're going to be going after the same people. What a lot of them, I'm afraid, is going to do is like we made a mistake one time and put it in reoccurring expense. Can't do that. It'll, it'll come, that's part of what's coming back. Still back. But the, the part, um, part of the problem with this ESSER funding, too, though, is if you're going to address the academic losses that are associated with COVID-19, how do you do that without hiring people? I mean, there, if you do it any other way, you're wasting money. Now, we're going to spend a lot of money on, on staff development for our folks, uh -huh. but... Do you know, Dr. Baldwin, if you... During the pandemic and the virtual stitching and kids not coming back, have you... Have we lost ADM money? Do we know yet? 
based on what our projected uh, allotment is for next year, and it's it's a little bit, you have to kind of read into it. For instance, last year we received eight positions for program enhancement total. Uh, this year we're receiving 10.5, but our overall allotment is only going up one position. So it's hard to say if they have reduced our uh our O01 numbers based on our ADM decreases, and it looks like we have lost kids due to COVID-19. I don't think we've lost it to the extent that other systems have. Um, fortunately for us, though, the state is not looking at um, 2021 to base our funding allotment on uh, for 21-22. They're looking back at 1920. Um, so we'll see how that all plays out with the number of folks that have um, purchased property in Macon County, I suspect that our numbers will go up next year. Now, will we have the, will we have the teachers in place to, to, uh, to apply towards those numbers? We won't know until somewhere around September the 1st. Dr. Ball and I agree with Paul on this, that I don't do Facebook, but I've got it sent to me 28 times today by people from one of your employees. I don't know who it is. Don't say. Hey, it one basically of our boys. says, uh, the meeting starts at 4 p.m. The county managers recommended the commissioners ignore any request for additional positions, and it goes on. I don't, it don't say who wrote it. It just says, Ronnie, please read. Ronnie, please read. Uh, 28 times. So if you're encouraging your employees, that don't help. If they don't know what Derek is doing. Mr. Beale, if I may, uh, as a non-employee. That was what? You wrote it? I wrote that, and I really quick, um, within the hour, I realized my mistake. Um, and I did edit that, and I apologize for that, but I was not talking about it. I didn't know I got to edit the version, because, buddy, my phone rung off the hook. I'm just saying, your employees need to be careful, Dr. Ball, because it really affects how we look at things sometimes, it, uh, well, and what Derek's do? job really is. Uh, His job is not to that, ignore. That was my mistake. Uh, I, I understand, that. and I don't think that our employees did that. And if they do, let me know. Are you, are you a school employee? No, sir. I didn't know. I figured it was a compliment. Uh, one, one other question. This is way, out, way off the wall. Appreciate you coming. I appreciate you negotiating with, with Derek. Your knowledge, you and Angie's knowledge of the school system financing is way above anybody sitting up here. So well, it's, we're just doing the dance more or less tonight. I have to look for Derek for guidance on school funding. I appreciate your input and your, your availability, and certainly Angie's too. And I, I feel the same way about this board. Yeah, and, and we may pick at each other a little bit, but overall we, we, we know what the end product has to be, how Absolutely. we get to, I don't know, the state. You know, it's it's a, it's a every year it's a, it's a dance. Critical race theory. Has that thing even come close to Macon County yet? Um, you know, you know I'm, the only thing that I've heard much about critical race theory um, I know About that some critical race theory, gotcha. some of our, uh, my colleagues, uh, there have been some protests at board meetings and that sort of thing. Um, you know, I, I don't even know where it's at in the state curriculum right now as far as consideration. It's not something that, that we're overly concerned about um, at this point, at least in Macon County. John, you may know more about it being a social studies teacher than I do. I don't know of a single teacher in North Carolina public schools that teaches critical race theory. Do we teach the impacts of, of racism in the United States from Bacon's Rebellion to slavery to convict labor to keeping people of color from fighting in combat units in World War I? Segregated units in World War II, Jim Crow, segregated schools, mass incarceration. Yeah, we, we, we do teach that. Um, it's part students, of history, right? Say again? It's part of history. It's all part. That's, that's exactly right. It's part yeah. of We don't history. erase history. We learn from it. Uh, it's just a question I have because sure. there's some crazy I, I, stuff. You know, I know it's come up uh, in surrounding districts. Um, I think Chairman Breedlove had, had received an email questioning um, what our position is, you know, um, we follow the state curriculum. We don't add to or take away from that a great deal. Okay, just add it off the wall and throw it out there. I'll Thank say, you again. I'll say a few things. Boy, I'm glad I'm last.
uh, uh, I probably have more ties to this Macon County school system than anybody in this room, and so it's important to be able to vote without emotions. And talking about what Mr. Beal and Mr. Higdon touched on with the, I would say contracts, but more or less the contracts we have with North Carolina and how the state funds the operational and the county funds the brick and mortar. So if you said we're after a 16% increase, $10.6 million is what the county already provides. Can you imagine what kind of capital we would have in our community if, if we had $10 million a year to go to these buildings and structures? And I mean, the high school wouldn't even be an issue. The middle school, we'd, we'd have brand new schools everywhere you look. So at some point in time, I have to stop and say, i, I got to keep my eyes on the prize. We just talked about the high school. And with regards to Mr. Taylor, I'm not going to go there. But, like, you know, I, I don't want to see somebody break their leg on that track. I want to kind of focus on the, on the contract and what we're supposed to provide for this community. And that's kind of where I'm going at some point in time. Mr. Bill said it in the last meeting. We we don't tell the school board where they spend their money. There's 10.6 million dollars of county funds going to the school board, and you know it's it's. I know the STEM. I know there's a an outdoor program at the middle school. There's a lot of different really cool programs, but I think it's up to the county and the community and the school board to kind of you know help kind of decide what you, you want to find. You decide what you want to find. Like I want to focus on capital. I'm okay. It's okay with me to spend my money when I see something. When I see something nice, and especially when we abide by the state contract, and I just feel like if we just keep and keep and keep going, we're never going to have a school. These schools are going to keep on flopping. They're going to be 80 years old. And we're going to keep putting, you know, money into the same schools. And, and maybe it's just me. I'm glad there's five commissioners, but I want to see something nice with the capital expenses that we're supposed to provide. So it's kind of last Any further questions? <laughs> Came okay, back to the number of students in the classroom. So it came back that historically, if that piece had never been bothered, it would be in this situation. Like, well, we have our arts, music, things like that. So but traditionally, you, you, you've been in education long enough to know that something changes every year with, with that, with how we're funded and what we're expected to do um, with what we're funded, the amounts that we're funded in. about three or four years ago where we wouldn't have that, where we could keep a music art and PE and stuff like that. But we knew it was going to come to an end because they told us it was going to come to an end. The end is here. And uh, it'd be nice to get a call from somebody saying, we're going to give you three more years in this situation. But, but the end is here. And now we got to deal with it. Well, and we also, we know that we're going to have to deal with crises. We had the recession back in 2010. We've had the pandemic now. There will be something else in four or five years that we'll have to deal with. I mean, we we don't know how that's going to affect schools then. I think you, you mentioned it a while ago. Qualified manpower is going to be the will be a huge challenge. Vacuum we're going to have. You and I talked about it two years ago. Teacher assistants. You go out here and try to find 39 or 40 teacher assistants. You can. That's what we needed in our classrooms to, to work the year. Yeah, they're required to have a certain number of um, hours, college credit hours, and McDonald's is offering a $500 signing bonus. Right. Well, we're in trouble. And the, <laughs> Good for at, at the schools, the universities, uh, students are not going in this arena, in the educational arena anymore. You mentioned that there a while ago. Uh, also, there was another uh, video I saw two days ago, and I've got it here somewhere, is that it, it's not so much, um, I went on the theory there for a while, and I'm about to change my mind that it's more than just one theory, that you can't pay people not to work. And I held on to that until I saw that video the other day. And it's, it's our population, the workforce population is decreasing. You got people like me, older like me, that are retiring, and that void is not being replaced by births. No. And when I looked at that the other day, and they had a number of things that was affecting this job market, I'm just one of them. So yeah, that, and you've got cars that can drive themselves now, too. Right. They still flying in our planes? 
What's that? They still flying them airplanes? They're, they're working on it. Oh. Josh is not in that. Hey, hey, Mr. we got people in population. Las Vegas <laughs> flying airplanes that are bombing in Afghanistan. That's, now that's, <laughs> that's the job I want. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Oh, now I just was out of ball. We appreciate what you do for Macon County very much. So, and please don't leave because we're going to, I think we got a couple more topics to talk about okay. regarding our budget. And then we're going to circle back on the, the high school. Okay. So, Thank you, guys. Hang out for just a minute. Thank you. Josh, appreciate I appreciate your agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse it's, it's under item number three. Y'all please silence your cell phones, please. It's under item number three. Budget discussions as needed. <laughs> Anything else? What did you? I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Chairman. What did you say? <laughs> Any, oh, other, any other budget discussions as needed? I'm following oh, yeah. the agenda as Paul yeah, said. Just get your list out. <laughs> Uh, the high school you said you was going to any talk about. Y'all got. I want to talk about the high school after we get done okay. with budget. Well, is anybody else out here got anything before we? You no, so call out anybody? Y'all. That was it. I'll go ahead. Okay. I'm up for whatever. A few Don't things you. that I have is uh, that as leads on to uh, that we'd like to talk to the county manager about. One was increasing the library budget. Uh, I know we pay a lot through Fontana Regional Library for our library service. We do have three libraries. Uh, we've not, the best of my knowledge, we, we gave them a $20,000 increase, I believe it was eight years ago. Uh, they've asked for a $53,000 increase this year. Uh, going back and looking and doing my own style of math, uh, I do think a $30,000 increase is warranted. Uh, we do have to pay uh, they use that budget for, we already pay a million one, Derek? Uh, one million, nineteen thousand, three hundred and nine. And that's just not counting. We also pay for, yes, for all the utilities, the overhead, overhead. But this is for basically for, uh, for the employees, uh, to have, for their insurance and raise, which they are not county employees. But I'd like for the board to take that into consideration. And, uh. Ronnie, I'm sorry. What was you? Are you recommending the full no, funding or uh, just 30000 $30, above current yeah. budget? I done my own color right. taking math on it. I'm sorry. I just so, wanted to make sure I had my notes correct. Uh, <laughs> also, we're going to have to have a discussion. Derek, do you have any more knowledge on the pay study, the scale? Gallagher. Whatever that is. The, uh, what, what we presented at, at the budget meeting, um, again, at... Um, six percent is about what we have reserved and with the revenue parameters that were put in place and funding everything the best we could um that was the revenue that was available and we so we reserved but is that enough and earmarked it the preliminary recommendation from gallagher um, right now is at seven to nine percent um average and that is average that is not that does not mean that upon implementation, when I say 6% average, that doesn't mean that everybody in the county gets a 6%. Or when Gallagher says 7 to 9%, they're saying on average, our positions are 7 to 9% below market value. So what we have earmarked and set aside is 6%. But, and I, I'm, I'm one of hard. You're hedging, Derek. Is there enough money in there for the raises for everybody as we, as we talked about? I think. I mean, I'm, I will make, we will make it work. I mean, uh, Jackson County right now, for instance, they a very similar county. We compare to them in a lot of things. They're appropriating, I was reading their budget message, they're doing a pay study in this budget year and they're earmarking a million dollars. Um, Swain County is also conducting uh, a, a pay study this year, but again, that's not a comparable county. But the revenue parameters we were given, as the chairman's alluded to, was to get this budget balanced without a tax increase and that's what we've done and with that being said that we will use the money 1.23 million that's earmarked to address the the critical areas in, in, in the pay scale that need addressing and I think that that we can make that work so is that a yes 
there's enough money in there to do what you need to do. You know, Now's the time. Done. I mean, you don't know. You know, it's just a, it's a reserve fund, and you don't have to spend it all. And I think, right, I think we, as that study right. progresses, we'll be able to. You, when's the uh, last time you talked to them? We talk to them every week, Wednesday. They're, right now, we made some revisions to the last document they sent us. We went through what they sent us. We had collected our own internal data. We've been collecting it for ten months prior to uh, contracting with Gallagher, and so we went through and seen what they're recommending on their benchmark positions and seen what we had internally and where were there, where there were discrepancies of 5% greater or 5% less. We've noted all those, and Gallagher's right now working on and we'll meet next week to see um, there was about 14 out of the 40 positions that we matched up uh, that were plus or minus that 5% that could really impact um, that study and, and what the, the, the results totally. are. So we're still fine tuning it. But I just know we've sat here through four of these things and it, it's never been funded. So uh, if we're going to do another, let's see if we've got enough money to fund it. That's one thing. And the last thing, uh, Mr. Chairman, is we still need to talk about the library in Nanahala. Uh, we've got to make some decisions over there. Either it's down to two things. Either we uh, tear down the existing structures and, and, and appropriate the money for a new building where it is now, or we make provisions. Uh, they will not be moving to the, uh, to the new building, so I don't know where we stand with that. Uh, so that's, that may be a discussion for a later time, but if we're going to appropriate money in a budget, now's the time for that. Uh, Nkwasi uh, recommended uh, from that, and we can, I, I think that money, Derek, can come from the Economic Development Fund if we need to, and I'd have to have a change in the budget, that 25000 remember that? I wouldn't recommend that, just because we've hit it so hard with the broadband project, which was $580,000, and then the uh, reopening Macon Fund last year mm -hmm. was what, two? Two twenty. Two twenty. Yeah. So you've hit that fund pretty hard. It, well, it's the Nequasi, you know, it's a, that's a very minimal investment on what Nequasi's doing. What was the amount, Ronnie? Right? Twenty-five thousand. Uh, and we're going to have to have uh, just because we it, we're not going to have no water at all. We need uh, ask for appropriation of ten thousand for a new well at Cali School. We're going to have to do it. Yeah. We, we won't have no. Choice. That's a county-owned building, and uh, we keep getting letters, and because it's a public, it's just like any of our other public buildings. So, I, I believe, Mr. Trumman, other than the high school, uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. That's the cheapest you've let us off in a long time, right? That's what? That's the cheapest you've let us off in a oh, long time. Oh, I ain't done yet. No, we ain't done. That's just the first get-go, Paul. We gotta watch what's going on in Washington. We make that four hundred thousand a year, buddy. We're gonna get hurt hard. So, All right. just be careful. Commissioner Chills, any any questions on the budget? No, pertaining to those topics. Anything new that you want to add for discussion tonight besides the high school? No. That's okay. Commissioner Young. Yeah, I've got a couple. Um, a couple of my questions, Mr. Sheriff, would go to you, and maybe some of the. the Courthouse security. Do you have an update with, uh, you know, with? I walk through that metal detector every every other every month, and I've, I've, I've it's never been open, never been functional. Yeah, it actually hasn't, and the reason for that is because we're having a hard time getting employees, uh, basically because of of the pay and uh, issues that are going on. As you probably know, we have 13 or 14 positions that uh, are open right now. Four of those positions are courthouse and security that uh, you all will remember giving us, and we still have those four positions that are available uh, that we, we have to fill. And uh, that's, that's the reason you can't have somebody manning those um, equipment, and then you can't have somebody there and in the courtroom at the same time. And that's the issue that we have. Let me ask you about. You have how many open employees? 13 Thir open positions? I believe it's 13. It might be 14 now. 
Like, let me ask you, I mean, I'm shooting, pardon me for my inexperience, okay, but shooting from the hip here, it seems like, realistically, we're not going to fill 14 positions. It's been open for some time now. Is That's there any way we can maybe take six of those positions, or seven of those positions, and uh, take their salaries and maybe redistribute to our other loyal employees and kind of you maybe could. maybe up some of those positions and say, hey, look, could. thanks for staying with us because I know they could go anywhere else and make more money. You absolutely could, and what and you'll do is you'll eliminate services to the citizens of Macon County. Well, right now we already don't have enough people to fill shifts. We already don't have enough people on manpower. And when you start eliminating positions that we have fought very hard for the last 18 years to increase, uh, and, and thank goodness that the commissioners were able to do that for us at sure. different times, never in my 30-year career with the Sheriff's Office have I had so much difficulty in filling positions. And that's because, like right now, you have a BLET class, basic law enforcement training class. I think you have four people that's left in that class to graduate, and they're not even finished yet. So you'll be lucky if you have two or three people in that graduating class. And if I eliminate positions, those are positions that I will never get back, Mr. Young. I can guarantee you, because for me to get a position takes an act of Congress nearly with the county commissioners. And that's because you all are very tight with the funds, and that's what your job is to do. So I have to really work hard to be able to show the stats. Our school resource officers. The only reason that we have school resource officers in our school system is because we've eliminated positions within our agency. We have received a couple of grants um, in order through the years to be able to get those positions. But we've actually have eliminated positions. We've had officers that have retired, and instead of replacing those officers, we have taken those officers and put them into the schools to, to create the SRO positions. So all that to say you're absolutely right. We could, we could take those vacant positions that you say that we probably could never fill. I have a feeling that once the pay study gets completed, we'll have an easier time of getting that. The only reason that we have so many vacancies is because our county is losing people that we've invested 6 and 10, 15 years into, and they're going to, to agencies within our own county making six to eight thousand dollars more a year that's 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 why i make my recommendation so my question i guess if we're losing services are those services currently being provided if we have 13 vacant positions by no means do i want to cut the budget i just want to up the scale again and say look like you know it's the same thing in my industry you know i've never paid a tree climber more money than what i'm paying right now it's a, it's unbelievable i'm yeah. sure everybody else so What's I, I just, what happens is you're not the services that we're doing our best to provide, we're still providing those services minus 14 people. Because what's happening is, and I know some of you have made issues of, out of my overtime. Understandably, I should be asked about that. Well, the reason we have so much overtime is when we have positions on the road that are vacant, that we don't have people in, then somebody who's already worked their 86 hours in this pay period has to come in and work another 12 hour shift or a 36 hour shift, or not shift, but 36 hours after they've already worked 46 hours this week. And so they fill in on those vacancies. The place that we don't have that a whole lot of is courthouse security. Um, we have part-time people that come in and, and help with our courthouse security to fill in courts. Because, you know, we used to have, you know, one court or maybe even two courts um, in, a, in a week. Now we're having, at times, we're having three courts four days a week, or, or three courts five days a week in the three different courtrooms. Well, you can't have people in on the metal detector, you've got to have two. You can't have two people there, and then also your man, your, your people up in the courtroom. You cannot adequately have <coughs> one officer in a courtroom with about 500 people, 500 people that are in court for a reason. I know some of them are probably innocent, but most of them aren't. <laughs> and you've got one person that's in there responsible for the protection of all your court personnel. Makes it really difficult. I just know in today's time it's tough to be in law enforcement. You know, I appreciate what they do and it's by no means it's it's I mean I see your pain. I'm just trying to I'd hate to see you next month and you say I'm down I'm down seventeen people. I don't I don't know what I'm going you know. If I could, if I if I had a magic wand, 
I'd fix the pay. I've already told the manager, he'd probably verify it for you. I don't care what you take out of my budget. You can take my pants, you can take my cars, you can take my shoes, you can take my patrol cars, I don't care. You need to pay my officers more money. And if my officers are not the only ones, it's all over the state of North Carolina. And it's not a priority for most counties. Um, it's just not. And it's, it's, I'm passionate about it. I, you know, I, I don't make no bones about it. I think I fought really hard for 18 years as the sheriff. Um, I couldn't fight for that before that because I wasn't the sheriff. Um, but I'm, I'm really hopeful that this pay study, uh, we, I'm, I'm like Ronnie Beal said a few minutes ago, you know, I was bragging on him the other day to my people what he said in the last meeting that you had. We've done this four times. There's so many people in our county who are, who are, are, that work for the county who are disgusted that we're doing a pay study. And the reason for that is because every time we do a pay study, we never follow it through. You guys are, are being as tight as you can. That's your job. But when it comes down to it in the end, it ends up being so tight that we don't even fix the pay for everybody. We, 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 we just put a Band-Aid on it. Um, you know, my chief deputy just retired after 30 years with this agency and was, you know, it's a shame of what he was making. And um, there's so many people that are saying, well, we lost two SR. We have now, and I'm kind of, I hate to even say this because there's media in here, but we have four schools that didn't even, don't even have officers. We should be extremely proud that our county has an officer in every single one of our schools. Right. But we have four, excuse me, and grateful. Oh, absolutely. And and we have that because of the support of our commissioners and our support of our school. But here's the problem. Those four people, two of those people, we, we invested six and seven years in those officers. And these are not rookie officers. I cannot hire somebody straight out of BLET and put them in a school. You do not want a rookie officer in the school system. But you, we've got uh, six and seven years invested in these two officers that left. And they left for an agency within our own county, making seven thousand, six thousand dollars more a year. So you might as well take in that money that we put to invest in him and train him, and picked up the garbage can and thrown it in it because that's exactly what we just wasted. So my last point. Sorry, no, on, but I'm passionate about it. Yeah, look, I appreciate that. So I guess, and I clarify this with Derek, but the funds that you don't use on these salaries. They go back into the fund balance. Am I right on that, Dirk? They roll into fund balance at year end, but in the very next year with the new budget, they'll be appropriated into the new budget. Into the new budget. Yeah. So, like my point on the on the uh, looking at this chart with the fund balance, LGC recommends eight percent. I'm sorry, the minimum is eight percent fund balance. We have fifty one percent. Like to me, Mr. Tate, it seems like you know we have eight or ten weeks of vacation and we're not use it. Maybe I'm wrong in thinking that. I know it's nice to have, you know, a nice surplus. We have a, we have a county. We said it at 25 percent. 25 percent of the commissioners before none of us I said it. Limit that we were not below 25 percent without a vote of this commission board to change that. Uh, Eight percent is the is the minimum now, and that's about to change. That's about to go to 15 percent to 8 percent. Well, they'll start saying. But we're at 25 percent in, in Macon County. Well, that's the minimum, but right now we're at 51 percent. But we, only we can only use. We have to re, 25 percent has to be remaining in the fund balance. So, so I guess go below that. So what I'm saying is, it's a testament to the county manager for, for being on target with all his, uh, you know, all the budgets. And this and took so years to do that. It, it, it has to. So it's it's not saying anything bad about it. I'm just saying it's nice to have an nest egg, but at some point in time. Well, there's, there's, there's Josh. Well. There's also a tremendous financial value to that. It's like our bonds that we just went through. If we were sitting at 25 percent versus 50, we'd have probably been sitting at two and a half percent versus what is it, one point nine? Know a lot of interest, a lot of money. There's there's advantages to that. There's, there's, yeah, it's, it's a deep subject. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It. Pardon my inexperience, but thank you for your time. It's, no, 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 no. It's, uh, it's not, we, we like the question being asked. Thanks, but I want to be I, said, I, I promise to be transparent. So there it is. Yeah, we, we want to be transparent on this board and everything. So if you got questions, we want you to ask them. Yeah, because the sheriff's standing here, I've had the opportunity to be liaison for 
a lot of years, and me and Robbie and I, and his former chief deputy, who's uh, uh, Andy Shields, has uh, served this county uh, tremendously for over 30, over 30 years. Uh, but to do what this, most people in this room, and especially this county, have no idea what this sheriff's department does. They, they really don't, Sheriff. And, and to be that short on people, and I don't know what the answer is. I do think, Lord, if when you put on a bulletproof vest, you're in a different category uh, than a carpenter's helper that I look for, or a, a Joshua's tree climber. If you wear a bulletproof vest for it, you're in a different category. Uh, I was so. asked this morning, uh, Facebook is used a lot, we use Facebook a lot, and somebody asked me, why, why don't you put advertised on Facebook like some of these other counties are doing about positions available? And I'll be honest with you. I'm embarrassed to. I'm embarrassed to try to put some information out there and encourage somebody to come because the first thing that they ask is how much you pay an hour. And you don't go into law enforcement for the money. There's no doubt about it. But it's embarrassing when you see McDonald's and Arby's and all these other places advertising at a higher rate than what you're paying. And I just uh, that's why I don't do it. And I'm just brand new. Hopefully, it'll be solid here real soon. So, yeah. KFC's got a real sign. Good question. Don't make it. No, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go on to uh, school. Okay. Thank you, Derek. Glory, the team. Put this budget together. It'll be a good one if we don't fiddle with it too much. Go ahead. Everybody, do you want to recess? Everybody want to recess? Two point three minutes. Not really. Not really. Okay. Let's roll. <laughs> we'll keep going. Derek, can you tell us what, um, just offhand, what um, you put in contingency for this year? 100000 100, Okay. I just looked back through it there real quick and I didn't see it. But what's it under? Non departmental. Non departmental. Okay. Yeah. Page 39. It's <coughs> been three months. 100000 Right now, just to. To recap, and, and if we could, all these things like that, that everyone's mentioned, if we could uh, go. We need to know. I've got yeah. a notes here. I've got Burningtown, I've got ITO, I've got the Forest Service, I've got schools, I've got the library, I've got the Quasi, and I've got the Kelly School. I've yes, that's what I've got. That, that, that matches up. Yeah. So, okay. That's what I've got as well. We're going to hold on them as a lump. I think one at a time. I think we need to get through each one one yeah. at a time. And it, what it does is gives Lori direction for putting her putting the final budget, final budget together. together. Yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. And we ran into it last year. I think we had two budgets. Yeah, because of the in. reopening making funds. That's right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Don't have that this year, thank you. So what do we do? We vote on those tonight? When do we get the final budget? Well, what will happen is if, if y'all don't want to have another work session, if you're going to be ready to approve it Tuesday night, know Tuesday night I'll bring you a budget ordinance I mean I'll try to get it to you in an email before then but the only thing that will the budget product won't change except for anything that y'all say to put in tonight you know what I mean so um, that final budget ordinance will be presented Tuesday night okay. Tuesday and I don't Derek I truly appreciate what y'all do putting this thing this, that's that's <coughs> notebook is a pile of work that line out of and I don't feel worthy to come up here at night and 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 nitpick this thing and change two or three line items. It's just I, th I just think that's kind of a slap in your face. But uh, I'm good with the budget. You did what we asked you to do. Don't no tax increase. Stay within this number. You've done it, and you've done it. I appreciate it, and I'm not going to piddle with. There's things in it that I don't like. But Appreciate what y'all do as a team. All right, we're waiting on Commissioner Bill to get back, but um, my recommendation is is that we take each fire department separately because uh, they're really not part. They're part of our budget, but they're not part of our piggy bank <laughs> that we're trying to work out of. Uh, of our, so I, th I think we work through those separately, and then we'll talk about uh, the others because uh, a good. Quite a good example is, is the Forest Service says they're asking for basically $8,500 more dollars. Seems like a no-brainer. We give it to them. Okay. So where do we take that from? Do we go ahead and pull it out of contingency? Do 
Should we take it from my pay? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Your recommendation? That way it'll be zero. <laughs> what was your recommendation? That, that blind side me. I didn't know anything about the fire department. I mean, the uh, Forest Service. What was your recommendation on that? I would first, I would like to say that, you know, I think that it's just a, a, a state agency like that. It, it is a shame that they can't have the autonomy to function within their budget. In other words, if they have lap That's salary, the truth. that they can't the truth. function within their budget to meet the needs of the community, that, that, it, <laughs> that it's that hamstrung at the state. That To me, that is a gross, and it's not their fault. It's an example of inefficiency at the state level. But... With the money, with the money left on the table, uh, you know, I, it's like when you're going through the budget process, and you know, your child asking for ten dollars to go to school for lunch money, and she's bringing you home five every day, and then she starts asking for twenty. You know, uh, you know that that's what I draw it back to. But if they can't, if they can't function, if they can't move that money around. Um, out of there, then like Lori said, that, that we can. There's a way to skin that cat. Um, this money that we have left over each year, like I said, in 2015 there was 4,600, uh, 2016 8,900, 2017 14,000, 2018 15,000. There's 30,000 left in there this year. Granted, it's some of it's paid in arrears, but if the 8,400 is what what they're asking for. Uh, addition, and I think that's right, then I would recommend appropriating it from fund balance because you're just basically giving them their money that rolled into fund balance back, back into to their it. budget. Yeah. So that yeah. and, and what a shell game. A conversation. A conversation. Get out of your left pocket, put yeah, your right, right A conversation with the state yeah. as to why that they can't have more flexibility within their, their contract with the state because they do. Like, uh, as they were saying tonight, they provide us an excellent service. Oh, absolutely. Those folks do a great job. And, absolutely. You know, it's not that we're, that, that we're trying to keep anything of the money that we're appropriating to them from them. We we want to give it to them. So, uh, you know, there, there's more than one way to do that. And if the board uh, is so inclined, then we would be happy, I mean, to appropriate because there's a 99.9% .9 chance that they're going to roll more money than the 84 yeah. 90 that they're requesting in the fund balance so really it's it's a shell game as the chairman said so uh, I, we're not out nothing doing that out of fund balance so is everybody in agreement with that yes yes yes, yes. I raise uh, your hand so I can see it there all right that's, so that's more service uh, next item is library I don't disagree with Commissioner Bill's point of the fact that since I've been on the, since I've been a commissioner, I don't think we've given the library an increase at all in the 10 years and uh, expenses go up, this, that, and the other. So I understand where they're coming from. I also understand that I always get in trouble every time I say this from somebody on the library board, but we spend more per person in Macon County for the libraries than the surrounding counties of the Fontana Regional Library System according to the stats that I've been getting. Uh, the question is, is, from my perspective, is yeah, I would love to give them the, the funds. I know it would be spent to good use, but where do we come up with them? How, how do you handle that? Because that's, that's not a one-time expense, that's recurring. That's recurring. But the so difference between it? us and the other counties you know, around us, Jackson and Swain, is we have three libraries. Uh, they don't. Uh, we have three libraries to staff. And uh, if it wasn't for some good donations from Highlands, uh, you know, it would be even more. Uh, and they have to staff them. And, and it's just like everywhere else. Their pay rate is way below what KFC and that bonus is, is paying. And these are good people that greet a lot of... Uh, a library is still important to a community, very important. And we've got good folks that, that work in the library that want to do the best in all of our libraries. Uh, that try to help our folks, especially our outline folks. They, uh, during the pandemic, they really showed their work, the libraries did. So, uh, you know, I think we're going to have to discuss later on, you know, when you get to the big topic of the high school, uh, if there's going to be a tax increase to that magnitude, then these small things that's going to be reoccurring should be implemented there, Mr. Chairman. 
point taken. So I'm just from what I'm gathering, no action until we discuss. I think all these so things is not in the budget list. Derek, you've got a magic. Uh, I hear you. And he I don't. Hear I hear you. All right. So that'll take us through to Quasi and Kelly School on the same items. Uh, school yeah. systems. No, we're going to do the. You mean the budget that, that, the, that the we budget, have in front yeah, of us yes, now? Yes, yes, not the schools yet, just the budget. That Derek, we remind us of the total, the total increase is 16%, correct? Yeah, about one, one point. Six, six million. Total. And again, that's on, if you want to reflect back in my budget message, there's pages 20 through 22, I kind of highlight where we're at now. Uh, Page, I'm sorry, Derek. 20, pages 20 through 22. I read it today. I can't remember. Jimmy, did we do the uh, library thing? We'll put you that individually. Mm -hmm. We decided to hold for now. Oh. Nothing. Yep. Okay. Oh. Yep. So, so the yeah, one point. I didn't take a vote on that. But is it 1.4? 1.6. 1.6. Yeah. And that's 100% reoccurring money. And the way that Dr. Baldwin explained it to us when he was speaking is that uh, most of that increase is for positions, correct? Is all of it for positions, yeah. Dr. Baldwin? Uh, I would say with the exception of that $50,000 contract for maintenance. The rest of it is for positions. We yeah. hope it's positions. Yeah, that, 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 that request did not take into account any benefit increases the utility increases that we learned about today, there's nothing built into that budget. Well, here's the facts on that, Mr. Chairman. That's a penny and a half on the tax rate. Uh, right there, just for the schools. So, oh, just for that portion of the schools, for the 1.6 million. 1 That's two pennies. Two, two pennies, pennies two almost pennies. exactly. For the 1.6 million operational increase would be two pennies. Yeah. That's two cents right there without talking about anything else. So I think that's the discussion you have to have first. I don't, well, what I was saying earlier is, is the, uh, since they've got the money coming in from the federal government, about giving them the flexibility between operations and capital. What do we give each one of them, Derek? Uh, capital, we give capital? One, 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 five, zero, one point one five million. Operating expenses, we give $8.732 million. So you, you're you saying then, if you can use some of the... the well, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just I'm just throwing, I'm tossing the softball up there. Right. I don't know if it's a good idea or a bad idea. I'm just we, we trying can to think through it. So. For capital or operations. So that, that, okay. As but long as it meets those three criteria. But if you use it for capital, that's... Uh, that's firm, brick and mortar type stuff. It's one and done. Yeah, it's one and done. But if you use it for the other one in 2024, then, then that's reoccurring monies or no monies. potentially. Yeah, potentially. no monies. See, that's the thing. There's many unknowns you don't really know. Uh, Dr. Baldwin, you said in your fund balance you had one point. Today, we have one. Now you got to remember that's making county taxpayer dollars too. The one the firm balance is. So, I mean, but you, everybody needs. I remember when it was this. Yes. And, uh, and very part, well. Part of the reason that we still have one point three is because of those program enhancement positions. You know, we don't know how many we're going to need in the spring, and we won't know until September the first how many we'll actually need. They give us a number of program enhancement positions in the spring. We apply those or not in the fall. Uh, we've been able to hold on to some of those positions up until 21-22 when that huge uh, uh, need comes into play due to the full implementation of the K-3 class island uh, law. So we won't have that moving forward. I remember so well the driver education fiasco. Do you happen to remember that, Dr. Bob? the teacher assistant. <laughs> that, that was the yeah. teacher assistant. You can't make it up. So that's the. Uh, uh, All right, so we'll 
we'll, we'll hang with no changes as of now, but we'll, we'll circle back to that here in just a few minutes when we talk about the high school. Uh, let's talk about Burnintown. Uh, Paul, that's your district. You know, I appreciate what Dwight's saying. The service to provide one out of 12, or one out of one to two out of 12 asking for the increase now by the same fuel, out of the same, main, the same, same maintenance issues. I'm not for uh, uh, any tax increase at all. I'd have to speak in favor of it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Burlington uh, is like the rest of these volunteer fire departments. They still offer uh, the best service for the money of any taxpayer dollars. And they're asking for a very small increase. Uh, Vernon County has had its struggle retaining firemen. They're doing well now. Uh, the leadership seems to be in control. If Warren was here, I believe he would agree uh, that that small of increase uh, in the whole lot of things with the, with the folks on, in Vernon Town, uh, I think that's I think that's reasonable, and uh, and and I think Mike done a good job explaining why he. Well, he needs the increase. They got a 25 percent fund balance and uh, a 230,000, 240,000 budget. You find some funds in there. That's one. I'm one man. What was, what was the increase? Uh, half a mil. Half a mil. It's eight thousand dollars. Twelve thousand dollars. In the community. Yeah. In the whole community. It's surprising. I mean. Uh, Speaking bluntly, it surprised me that they requested that, that minimal of an increase. For $60,000. With that much money in the bank and with uh, um, <laughs> revaluation coming up here real soon. So. Um, anyway. Okay, let's, I guess let's take a vote on it. Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, uh. Raise your hands, please. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As signified by saying no. Uh, that was for Burning Town. Town. Otto is the big one. Yeah. Yeah. You're the liaison, Mr. Chairman. That. That's it. They, they need an increase. I just don't know if they need an increase that big. Uh, I'm in favor of an increase, but that's a tremendous increase to happen at one time. But speaking, go ahead, Paul. No, I mean, no I'm, I'm pondering. I'm mean, let's listen to, listen to y'all's ideas too. So, <laughs> you know, I appreciate they're the bind. They got a leak in building. Of course, we had a leak in Jim and Isco in Highlands for 12 years. But you know, they've got a leaking building, an outdated facility. But this concept of turning rural fire, rural volunteer fire departments into full, into full semi full time fire departments, I think is just. It's just unreasonable to me. That's not the uh, charter of a rural fire department. And a five, five mil tax increase uh, is phenomenal. Uh, uh, I just, I just, I was hoping they were coming back with a scale down model uh, of something. And I, just, I can't, I couldn't vote to increase anybody's taxes 5%. You would be in favor of any tax increase for them. Um, what you're no, and you hear this saying, well, they got to pay the fair share. Who sets the fair share? The government does. So, what is fair? I'm, it's, not, it's not the matter of how much money you got, it's how you use it. They're the bind, right? What, what bothers me, Mr. Chairman, is that the last time they were here, it was 3.7 something like that. Three point. 3.7 million and now it's 5 point um, so with our millage rate uh, it come out to 300 something dollars a square foot uh, they bought the land you got to see what they've invested to they own the land they do have all the infrastructure in it is going to cost them money to sprinkle it uh, about four times what it would cost if they had city water but uh, do they need What's the basic need? Uh, you know, I just, I think they need an increase. I really do. And I think they need to put some money back into this building they've got for nothing from the Otto Community Building. Uh, but that's a different subject. But uh, I would listen to your recommendation, Mr. Chairman, as you're the liaison. I think that we can give them 
I think they, they have plenty of land for an expansion. Uh, I, I'm not, if it was anywhere close to the, the original three point something, I'd go for it. I would be on full on board. But uh, nearly $400 a foot. For a lot of it's not hated. Uh, it's, I know it costs a lot of money to build a specialty building. I do know that. But uh, I think they do have a place for expansion. I know it's going to cost them more when they come back and do that. And it would be wonderful to, that if we had plenty of money, but uh, that kind of increase on one community at one time. I've talked to several from down there, and they did all support it, the ones I talked to. They, every one of them said, you know, that don't bother us. That we're still, that's a real bargain. But at the end of the day, it comes down to this board and what we want to do uh, but for the people of that neighborhood. I will, uh, I think it's, I think it's a little much at one time, Mr. Chairman. I just, I mean, they can come back next year maybe and, and hit it again or, uh, but if they could have stuck with the, the original thing around 3.6 or whatever it was, I would, I would fully support that. But now, when you had two million bucks in, in one year, which I'm not saying that that's right or wrong, but I think it's few, I think it's more that community can handle. Yeah, I, I guess I hear what you're saying, but I have allegiance to the community. They had input on this uh, to go by there and see that the, the trucks and stuff won't, won't fit inside the building. Uh, I, 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 I just feel like the community had an opportunity uh, to give their input, and uh, with this increase, I hear y'all construction people talk about this increase that's that's happened. It's not going to be cheaper next year, and so I, I think with the community input that they verified in here, that I would have to go with this. I'd have to vote with uh, uh, the boys the Pato. I think the community had an input into it. And it seems to me from the input they had there and talking to some of the people there, um, they, they, they feel like they can handle the increase. I think it's tough too, but it's going to be tougher next year. And that area is going to grow from our broadband uh, plan that we put together here. Uh, it, it, that's... Supposedly, that is going to be the main area down through there, and business-wise, and homes. So, me personally, I don't feel comfortable voting against the people of the community if that's what they've chosen to do. <coughs> I'm sure residents. I mean, I'll keep, I'll keep it short. So we, I do live down there. I mean, I hate to sound. I'm busy. I've never heard of the meeting. I wish I would have known. Uh, Surprised me when you get a letter, like, when you said two people. Like I just feel like, like I would like to go to the community and say, hey, you know, look, you guys put me in here. What do you think? You know, I feel like if this all of a sudden was sprung on them, they'd say, holy cow. What? You know, I feel like we're going from a 1973 Chevrolet with 700,000 miles on it to a 2021 Cadillac right here, like just overnight. Like, I'm looking for a, you know, a nice Chevrolet. You know, How just a good truck. You know. So, How long have we had the fire department? Though? That's where I'm. I'm kind of right in the middle. I do think they need something better. I, they need something better. So I don't think they the five point something million is really hard to justify. Trying to gain consensus on this board, it sounds like there might be consensus on this board to give some approval for an increase, but maybe not to the extent that he's asking. So, so then the we're testing the breeze. My my thought on it is, is that if we give them an increase, it gives them an opportunity to uh, <coughs> put some funds away. Maybe start. Yeah, so, yeah, what we're doing is dragging their feet just another year is what we're doing. Yeah, so, but you know, I, I'm, but I don't know how you right. come up with that, what that rate is. I mean, I have point, uh, point one oh on my mind just for some strange reason, but there's no logic behind that. Repeat that again. I have point one oh on my mind, but there's no logic in that. That's just a, again, that's plucking a feather out of the air. And that's, that would be, uh, Two thirds of what they're asking, right? No, it'd be more than they're asking. Be right at one We could split it in half of what they're asking. Is there a county average? They're asking I mean, for five, whatever five, that would be given three, three cents. Give them how much, Lori? Thirty. Three cents. Three cents. If we gave, if it was. What's the cost of the board? 
If the millage was ten cent, you'd be giving them like a three, three point, three cent, and sixteen, one hundred. <laughs> and they're asking for like the five cent. What's the average? Oh, I don't you know. know. You just have to add these up and divide it. <laughs> well, you, it's hard to do that because you've got Highlands, who's really, really low, but has the house is a high tax had, had tax base. Yeah. And then you go to Burningtown and, and some of these outlying communities, you have, uh, you know, the tax base is not that high, so their fire tax is going to be a little bit more. Just, that's just, for your, just for your information, I don't have a dog in this fight. I'm not for the tax rate or against it, but just say someone had a $200,000 home in that community. Um, the 5.43 cent tax increase will be $108.60 a year increase on their tax bill. For a two hundred thousand dollar home, you divide that by three hundred sixty-five <coughs> days. That's thirty cent a day. Because I just, to me, when I think about tax increases, I like to break it down in year and days. Just so, anyway, like I said, I don't have a dog in the fight, but just, just some information. You're doing the increase. What is the overall? Their millage is that their total? That was six the, on two hundred. That, that was the increase only. Yeah. That was the increase only. Yeah. So. Could you do the math again on yeah, the uh, existing on the, millage? On the point of six eight four. Yeah. Or do you want it plus the new rate? Like plus the new rate. Yeah, the total. You want the total? Yeah. Okay. The existing and the proposed gotcha. one. Would be plus one hundred six. Two forty five forty a year for a two hundred thousand dollar home. Uh, Sixty seven cents a day. That's the current rate plus the increase. Give you the and that's only on your home. You've got it on all your personal property too, on yeah. your trucks, your automobiles. Uh, again, I don't have a dog. This may be one of those things, Mr. Chairman, we have to look at if we again decide on the on the high school. Because we got that's that could be wound up in this conversation too. When were the public hearings? Did he say? Do you remember? For this budget? No, for this. The auto. public hearing for the auto fire department. Yeah, I just in saw the paper. It was advertised in the paper. Okay. Nobody reads the paper. What's your thoughts, Mr. Chairman? Uh, I'm thinking we might split the difference between what he saw. And ask him to reduce the size of the building and go ahead and start the well, I would like, I would expect, I would hope that Josh in that time could. <coughs> I said, I'd be happy to go to if you don't mind with him and just meet with him and. Look over at one of them and see. So, so what would that be, Lori, if we split the two? So you want to cut the point oh five four three and a half? No. No. The, the difference between point one two two four and oh yes, point one two two four and point oh six eight four, whatever that increase would be. See now the the thing Warren provided or whoever it said point one two two seven. He said point one two two four to Mike. I know, but I think the book says point one two two seven. That's what I've been basing everything on. Yeah, the book says point one two two seven. I think Warren did this spreadsheet. Where's the book? Yeah, here. Let's look at it real quick. Because I noticed that too when he spoke. He said the point one two two four. And while she's looking, you got the spreadsheet there. Yes, I do. It's actually reflected in there that West Mac and Scaly have a tax reduction. No, we're not proposing a reduction. No, but I mean the way it's spread out here. You know, like I said, Warren did that, so I don't know, but Go ahead. I'm I don't think same, any of them are. Same question. I don't think any uh, of them are. I had are. that same you question. You should have asked that when Warren yeah. was here, but I'm pretty sure Jimmy Team told me when he dropped off these notebooks. He said there was not. Nobody is asking for a tax decrease. No. Well, they weren't asking. It was just the math. It was their math. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not ready. You have to push it out. <laughs> well, see now this is different. <coughs> yeah, it's this different. This sheet the has two. this sheet here has point one two two eight. The spreadsheet has point one two two seven. So. And he said one point two two four tonight. <laughs> so who knows? What did in his message? I don't. It's what effectively he, about five cent. I mean, it's a little over, but almost. In his cent. message, what did he say? Cent. He said point one two two four increase. In his message? Oh, in his speech tonight. Yeah, let's not see what he said, let's see what he wrote. Are you talking about his little memo? Let's 
the point one two two eight. Get that down right there. That's what it says in yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. So the second page, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's what we need to go by, point one, two, two, eight. That's what the chief put in right there. Yeah, in the memo, yeah. So half of that. It's roughly point nine five four point, one, two, two, four. So yeah. point nine five five point oh nine five five. Point nine five five point oh nine five five. So my point one oh wasn't far off. You got on the money? You're wanting to give them half of the increase they're asking for? Is that what well, you're that saying? Well, that was just my suggestion. It'd be 0.02, 0.0272. So the increase would be... If somebody... Does anybody know? I wish one was here. Franklin Fire Department's building. They're building a new fire station right now, as we speak. I wonder what that came out of Sparkle. Does anybody know that answer to that? I don't know. I know it's minimal because they're only doing storage the, the minimal stuff. Minimal, and, yeah. It's just a garage, basically. But that would give us a... The architect told me there's only 2332 heated in this. I just, I know prices are crazy and they'll adjust, but still, $5.8 million, I know it costs a lot. I know there are specialty things to do in the fire department. Uh, the concrete has to be like two foot thick where they park the fire. I know all that stuff, but. Uh, so, that's wrong. Half, of, half of their increase request is point. 0272 so their new millage rate would be 0 0.0956 so almost back to the dime you were suggesting okay. earlier can we get a motion on the same or can we make it so i'll make a motion that we adjust their uh fire tax rate uh to 0 0.10 got a motion on the floor i'll second it any discussion Get them. Go ahead. If you do this, are we just shagging them down to a minimum building? That's not going to be worth. That's a, a good question. What, what what are we doing to them here? That's a good you're question. Going to build a half a house, or you're going to no, build we're, a we're giving them a we're giving them a big enough increase so they can well, put a well on the budget. Down, so, when you, yeah. It's just like building your own house. You have to have a budget to start with. Now, if you want to surplus that budget, that's up to you. But uh, you you have this gives them a real good budget to work with. I think it does too. So. Uh, I'm not saying it's right or wrong or 5.8 is too high, but I've not saw the plans. I'm not. As he said, he'll come back and visit us next. I mean, does it have to be decided right now? Can it come back to you today and have more discussion with the department and just you know have more discussion? Like well, if we're going to have another work session, yeah. If not, if we're not going to have no more work session, meeting is Tuesday, and we're hoping to approve the budget Tuesday night. Yeah. And, and last year they came and did proposal, and yeah. I'm the one who made the motion not to because it's pandemic year. So I feel like. So okay. their bill of rent's going to be 10? 10 cents. Yeah, that's, I think minutes. that's kind of what's on the floor. I don't that's think y'all voted yet. Is. That's in essence all they've requested. They want level five, level eight. I mean, I think this gives them, with what they have now, Mr. Chairman, and given this, it gives them, well, we know we've got this X amount of dollars. We've done this much to the building. Let's see if we can make it fit to at least get us underway. I think that would do it. Well, it's I'm a, thinking the same as you. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. I can say if not, he'll, as he said, he'll come back and visit us next year, as he did last year when we declined him last year. Yeah. So... But still, that's a, and even at point one oh, that's a hefty increase a hefty for them increase. citizens. Yeah, right. Regard, they they might support it uh, till they get that tax bill. I'm just thinking about all the people who work the plant down there. I mean, that's just a lot of tired people on the fixed income. But that's uh, still farms. the cheapest tax rate, Josh. Is it? Well, that's what I'm not sure. Right. I mean, still, like, that's, that's, in that fire book, is the first page shut. Is it? I'm just looking at West, West Franklin's at. at uh, 
You can see where Octo is. 1076, you know, 103, 105, 105, 108, 111. Yeah, 111. This chart's the best thing in the world to go by. And it shows you, like Highlands is over here in the, they're the lowest. And there's a reason for that. Uh, maybe there's a reason Scaly Mountain and Nina Hale, Nina Hale is the highest. Maybe they can stop piling money and prices come down. And uh, I guess Mountain Valley is the lowest, and they got the lowest tax base. So we're probably ready to small, go. Probably the smallest district too. Yep. I don't know. I was, I guess. But any further comments, questions? All in favor, raise your hand and signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Uh, All four to one. Thank you, guys. Respect the fact that uh, we can respectfully disagree and have good conversation. I enjoy serving with all y'all. Good opinions. All right, so that's it. So next item on the agenda is uh, uh, discussion regarding the new high school. Uh, Dr. Baldwin, I'm sure you kept up to speed from the newspapers and social media and everything else, but uh, this board uh, decided to uh, uh, that we did like the plan that was presented to us. Uh, and that we would like to move forward with uh, a new high school, new Franklin High School, on the existing campus. And, uh, the way it was explained to us, it can be uh, construction. A lot of things can happen there without too much intrusion uh, to the existing student base. So uh, now it's up to this board to figure out how we're going to pay for it. Uh, there, there's been a lot of uh, ideas and thoughts that I'm aware of. I'm just going off the top of my head. Uh, New Cherokee County just got a tremendous grant from the state uh, to help them handle the air. So there's that opportunity with us. Uh, I have uh, made a phone call to Senator Corbin. We will meet next week to uh, uh, to discuss, or his first convenience is what we discussed. So we mentioned next week uh, to discuss that. Uh, there is the opportunity for, uh, which I am in favor of, a, a quarter cent sales tax increase. Derek, can you give me a number off that, what that would provide? Off this year's numbers, roughly? Rough estimate, about $1.7 million a year. $1.7 million per year. That has to go to a referendum, correct? Yep, yep. even number. Like next year. Next year. So I would like seeing that put on a referendum. Again, this is my personal opinion. I'd like to see it put on a referendum. Uh, Jackson County's already at 7%. Swain's already at 7 It's Clay. Clay at 7 too. Right. Might go, might not, but at least that offers to me. It's a no-brainer because if we're going to do this anyway, uh, I would I would rather some of our tourists help pay for this. They're passing three versus uh, weighing it all on the backs of our ad valorem tax. So, so we've got that. Uh, then the last thing is in a tax increase, uh, which I think is inevitable uh, in any scenario you look at uh, of how we afford this. So, uh, I'd ask our manager, knowing this, what I know off the top of my head, to provide us some numbers. Uh, I think it's been mentioned a couple times tonight what a, a one cent uh, tax increase is or millage rate, just kind of what it. It's about $800,000. If you're looking, we ran it on $90 million. We got our financial advisors with Davenport to run it under the same scenario that we ran the middle school renovations under at that time. And in 2023, uh, fully loaded principal and interest, assuming. A 20-year term, 4% interest rate. You're looking at 6.63 cents on the tax. Right? That's to fund it all. That's, to That's fund the average loan rate. Six point one. Six three. So, as again, in my uh, my scenario, in my perfect world, I would hope we could get some grant money from this from the state, similar to Cherokee County. I would hope that the again my pie in the sky wish list. Uh, if I can get lucky. Uh, with it. Uh, we would get that. We would get a, a quarter cent tax, sales tax increase on the referendum, and maybe just a very minimal uh, ad valorem tax increase to, to handle this. So the questions, uh, I mean, those are my thoughts. If anybody has any thoughts on other on funding, I'm They're great I'm thoughts, here, Mr. So. Chairman, but the holes in it is this. We're two or three county. Yep. Yep. Our options, our chances of getting a grant like Cherokee, which is a tier one county, uh, and how we got to a tier three and they dropped to a tier one, I, 
uh, I'm confused on that. But I think our chances are, are slim with the with the money that's available. Uh, we might get some, but I don't think we're going to get a lot as far as the referendum goes. Uh, a referendum is fine, uh, but I think it would get beat seven to three in Macon County. It uh, might, but unless we put it out there. Well, but we put it out there before. This ain't new. A referendum was never passed in Macon County. When was it put out? Right? It was put out. Uh, how many years have you been there, Dr. Ball? This is, I think this is my eighth It was put out 10 years ago. It wasn't put out the last uh, semester. Yeah, he was put out and got beat like a. Uh, that wasn't 10 years ago. It was longer than that. Might have been 12. Uh, our previous uh, superintendent was two superintendents ago. Yeah, that had Brigman, Dr. Brigman yeah. did. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And he got beat like a Tom Tom. And I, there's never been a referendum in the past to make it count. Remember, they put a referendum out for the middle grade school for cafeteria when they didn't build a cafeteria. What does that tell you? It tells you you've got a lot of folks here that forget that somewhere down the line, somebody paid taxes for their kids to go to school. And uh, they have forgotten that, that's what it tells me. Can, can I ask the uh, county, county manager one thing? Sure. We looked at a graph the other day uh, yeah, I that showed what our region, the state region. I didn't have it on there. I had the opportunity to work with him the day before, and I saw this graph. And I saw it again the other night. Um, and I, I think what I'm asking, if we do go up that 6.63, what does that change here? Uh, is Macon County still the lowest? Uh, the media. Yeah, extra. Brittany, some up there. <coughs> Jake. Can you give us a dialogue on this? Uh, yeah, it just shows us that's where Macon County's tax rate is compared to the um, region, our seven county region, as well as the average tax rate across the state of North Carolina in fiscal year 21. That was the <coughs> tax rate for the state of North Carolina is 0. 0.6755 on the 100. Average tax rate in seven county western region is 0. 0.4628 on the 100. Like the Are there any floaters with that? Fire tax, etc. cetera? No. That's I mean, just straight ad valorem tax rate. That's ad valorem. So they didn't consider anything. And some counties don't have fire taxes. We have fire that's taxes. Right. That's, straight, that's straight ad valorem. That's how they. Uh, so it's uh, misleading. You know, in the Office of State Budget Management. But if we put in that 6.63. Uh, and figure your fire tax in the and the and the fire tax because that's a millage rate. Anything that's a millage rate is is valued on property, whether it be real estate, personal property. So our property taxes are just our property taxes is thirty seven point four seven. My millage rate on my fire tax is ten point something. So there I'm at forty seven. Uh, I, <laughs> you know, and that's on my property, personal and real. So it lines up close to 50, 50 mils. So this could be misleading, these graphs can, on where we rate statewide. Right, and, and that's why the title of that graph is specifically property taxes. Property taxes. taxes. Yeah. It's not, <laughs> yeah, that's real yeah. property. It's not personal properties. But if we, if we looked at it from the title standpoint, and if we increased our ad valorem tax 6.63, uh, and you're up to 44.10 or 44.10? Property tax. Property tax, ad valorem tax. And so with that, even with that, we would still be the lowest within this region? You're, you'd be, you'd be, uh, you'd have, You'd be below the regional average, you wouldn't, as you wouldn't be the lowest in the region. Okay. Now we're number three in the state at this time, I believe, with uh, ad valorem tax. Uh, yes. 
And what percentage of the money that comes into our budget is ad valorem compared to what Paul was saying, property tax? There's no comparison on that. I mean, ad valorem is what the money's at. 56% of yeah. our budget's out of money. Yeah, yeah. that's what the money is. That's what I read there the other night. So, so that's counting property tax on your property and on your personal property. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 56%. 56% of the yeah. overall budget. But if you break. But now it does not count fire tax. No, it's in a separate fund. That's in a separate fund that does not flow through the general fund. But even if you added all the fire tax millage rates together and and multiplied it by the residents, it's very it's minimal. True. Real property is about I mean, $30 million a year. I have to do the math. Uh, well, you went to Western to do that. <laughs> Real property is about $30 million a year. Fire tax is about $5 million a year. $4.3 million. Yeah. Well, $4.3 million. Yeah. 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 So compared so to Ad compared, compared, Yeah, then that would be safe to say. It's, it's not. To yeah, it's, uh, it's not minimal to no taxes. It's, it's minimal. minimal. No. But it's... Uh, but that's where the money comes from from the county. Sure. If you're going to do a project like this, you're looking at, uh, you going to have to raise that for taxes. And or, uh, you're going to have to do both, Mr. Chairman. If you want to put it on a referendum in this year, I don't know if we got, if you can do it this it's year. It's got to be next year. It'd have to be in 20. got to be an even year. 22. Even, even number. It'd have to be in 22. But uh, the reason, ja only reason Jackson County, you know, they've tried it. A lot of counties have tried it. If you see how they do it, they pick a special time when to put that tax rate on. They done it during a, a runoff, didn't they? They, they put in a runoff election, I think. Eric could probably know. You remember Eric? I do not. Well, that's what they did. And they had all the Western Carolina students vote. So that's because they know if they put it out there just like we would, it would get smoked. Put it on the general. But, you, but you're still talking about uh, raising tax six point six six dollars uh, and six six point six three cents cents. And Roy gave that example. What would that do to a two hundred thousand dollar house? Um, let's see. Hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thirty two dollars and sixty cents. For two hundred thirty-six cent a day. And what would that do? Since Highlands, if you look at the numbers, Mr. Chairman, Highlands is probably it's upwards of fifty-five to sixty percent of our total tax base. Fifty-two at last election. It's more than that now. It's more than that now. I'd say it's closer to sixty, maybe. I bet you. So that's what do you think? You wait till the next revaluation. It's going to be seventy. Yeah. It'll be 70% of our total tax. So since you represent Highlands, Mr. Oh, that's Chairman. what I was saying last meeting. I'm, I'm the one. Y'all don't have any pressure. I'm the one getting a beat on the chin up here. <laughs> <laughs> but I still think that. But they also want a new high school. The ones I've talked to, they said, yeah. No, they want a new, they want a new, they want a new athletic field. And Highlands. But they also, they're not really totally against the new high school. Program. No, 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 no. No, no they're, they're, they're not. not needed. No, 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 absolutely. And, uh, I haven't and the arts program, they want the. I have not heard anybody speak against that at all. No. I, I think one thing that goes through my mind, though, uh, about a new high school. Mr. Chairman, can you excuse me just a minute? Uh, about a new high school is that your high school is a signature institution that represents Macon County educational philosophy. If you go down, if you go south on 441 or north, Franklin High School is the only school you'll see coming into town. Uh, you, you can't see uh, the early college, you can't see the middle school. You can get a glance at Cartuga J and stuff like that. But Franklin High School is a signature of, of what we are here and what we represent. More people see Franklin High School due to athletics, all of those things. Franklin High School has a, has a, we need to make sure it represents what we are because that's what people see when they come here. And uh, if we keep shortchanging Franklin High School and the development of it, uh, it's going to be a negative 
representation in my field. Having been the principal there for 21 years, you have to work hard at that school now to make it be a signature school. And, and it's hard to do because you don't have the facilities. But what I've seen in this drawing concept too, we can make Franklin High School a uh, signature school. And it can say, hey, that community there really invested in their high school. Education is important here. And so I, I'm, I'm a taxpayer too, but I want that school. Uh, I'd like to see a new school there and that concept too. And for us to have a name within this region of uh, we are promoters of education in fairness to our students. Our young people need to have a, a signature school, high school. And uh, other places do. I'll never forget the, uh, when son went to Western, what he said was, because our, our school facilities did not have the, uh, the internet, the broadband, things like that, that we need now more of, better, he would go into a classroom and sit down beside someone from Charlotte because the people from Charlotte had their upgrades and stuff. And so he would go into a classroom and make sure he looked around to see where those students were from in order to be updated or, 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 or be in, in the same realm as the other people are. So I think Franklin High School, uh, it may not be something for us right now, but I'm telling you for our grandchildren, all the rest of us, <coughs> 70, you know, it, it's been pieced together for 70 years. And if you talk to some people in the know, the maintenance people, they'll tell you the infrastructure is terrible. But I think we have an opportunity at this time to enhance, I'm going to call it the double A, the academics and the athletics. And those two pieces go together within a high school. And you, you have to keep it in balance too. If, if one of those gets out of balance, it, it's a tough way. It, it's a tough road to hold. So I'm invested in Franklin High School. I, I think the concept too was fine. Uh, obviously, I may be the only one voting that way. I would vote for us to put a uh, tax piece in place so we build a new high school. Which feels along with that, this was based on $90 million. Um, would you think we could assume that if we, if that should pass this board, that we could also include uh, a portion of you know, Mr. Dr. Bond, don't know what he's going to get, uh, but his request was uh, 1.4 increase, 1.6, and that included the arts, correct? Do you think we could, that would, uh, let's say we, in the best case scenario, let's say we we got through the high school with, a, with 80 million instead of the 90 million, that other, what I'd say, Money would give us reoccurring expense for a lot of things going forward because you don't you get to do this one time. This is it. This is it. My duration of my lifetime, I'm sure this is. This just, is it. Yeah, just so the board understands too, the assumptions that the financial advisor used was 90 million, but that was issuing the debt of, in spring of 2023. Okay, so that's two years from now and the first payment wouldn't be due until fiscal year 24 and the tax increase talked about would be in fiscal year 23 not fiscal year 22 but of course if you think we you know if you're wanting to speed up the process and issue debt a year from now then yes, you would need that 6.63 cent. So I just want to make sure the board's clear. Why the, wouldn't we want to do it? If we're going to raise taxes, why wouldn't we want to do it? On the speed up the process. But you could 
go ahead and that would speed up the process. You can put it in a special fund like Lori uh, was saying for the architect and start the processes now. Yeah, I mean you could you could raise taxes now, um, but you know a project like this is major. I'll be surprised if we can you know um, you know maybe I'm wrong, but I'll be surprised if we can issue debt a year from now for it. Yeah, uh, I mean it's possible. But yeah, Derek and I were talking about this, you know, before this meeting. That if you did raise taxes now, like he was saying, the money generated, the extra money generated, we could put in the capital, the school capital project fund. Go ahead and go through the architect selection, hire the architect. You've got money earmarked to hire the architect, and then see how far we can get down the road. And let's just say, so this. This is going to raise like 5.3 million dollars, the 6.63 cent roughly. So let's, I don't remember what the architect fees were out of that 88 million dollars, but let's say they're 4 million, um, well that leaves you 1.3 million that you could maybe uh, use as a down payment or, you know, so to speak, that you might not have to borrow 90 million, you might have to borrow 89. I mean, it's not a lot, but you, you get my point. Um, or like you said, if you have other uses that you'd like to put a piece of it to school operations, whatnot. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's nothing stopping you from raising the taxes now. But I just wanted to make sure you understood these underlying assumptions from the financial advisor for issuing debt spring of 2023. But if we had an assurance that what's really important to me, of course, is the new high school, but also... Like those school nurses they talked about the mental health i think going forward we have like 82 kids now in, in, in you know protective custody probably 82 more that's going in so uh it's i think that's uh, the arts program is wonderful and i know that but these kids are going to have to have some really special help going forward i guarantee you that uh, we just assume cardinal uh, cardinal was the largest lme would buy just Assume that responsibility. So, uh, millions of kids, it's and a lot of them in Macon County, is going to comments on this side, Mr. Higgins. Go ahead. Oh, uh, it not to challenge the chairman, but did you say we we agreed to move along on the school? We did at our last meeting. Yes. How did we we did do that in formal? We did too. Yeah. We agreed to accept that four, four to one. one. Yeah. Oh, was that the one? Mm -hmm. uh, not surprising. <laughs> uh, and the reason for that, the reason, the reason I have a lot of one votes is that we just decided one night in the meeting, it's time to build high school. Well, that, I can't buy that because uh, I'm not opposed to funding education and, and providing the best of everything, but uh, it's just we're, we're, we're considering encumbering the taxpayers of Macon County. Uh, they said $88 million. That didn't include furnishings. Content, you know, it's going to be a $100 million project. And as I talked with Dr. Ball about, we're $30 million in debt now for schools, $32 million. It's going to take another $100 million on school debt. That, we have a capital improvement plan that we spent good money to develop that did not include the educational system. So if we do this, in this rapid fire motion we're at, any improvements to county assets and county structures is dead for the next few years. There's just no more. I, I cannot fathom this board voting to go in debt over $130 million. That's just, it's, it's, just, it's mind boggling we're even considering going in. And then the little discussions that we've had about this moving forward and making improvements to Franklin High School, what were our options? Could we look at the current structures that we have what are options to make those better do we just have to go out and spend 100 million dollars just carte blanche spur of the moment without any public input we have the authority to do that but the only way that i'm going to support it would be through a referendum if the citizens make the says hey look uh let's build a new high school i'm on board 100 percent. whatever it costs however we fund it because those taxes are going to hit me too but as Ronnie said, referendums always fail. Well, there's a reason for that. If the, if, if the people that represent us, the people that vote us into this office, if they don't have a voice in our actions and what we do, then we're irresponsible. 
And, That's the reason uh, they elected you, Paul. Pardon? That's the reason you were elected. To be uh, that voice. I was elected to represent them, and that's exactly the only way to know what all of my constituents want is ask them to vote on it. It's not up to three members on this board. That's all it takes to to encumber us for hundred million dollars. That's not representative of the community uh, because I can't. I can't just sitting here for a couple of months. Hey, let's build a new high school. All right, how do we do it? Here, let's raise your taxes. That's just. I think it's just a gross example of uh, irresponsibility. Uh, We've worked on the new high school for how many years, Dr. Ball? Well, never since you've been here. Since never been since been goes back to when, when 2010. And I asked you when I came on this board, Ron, why do we need a new high school? And you know what your answer was? That was old. And it is. And I told you to go home and Google Harvard and Yale, see how old those buildings were, 300 years old. Uh, age doesn't have anything to do with it. I'm 73 years old. I'm the same age as high school. The floor either. And, uh, but anyway, that's my thoughts on this thing. I'm not opposed to improving educational facilities. But we do the high school, we gotta do, I'm hearing East Franklin now and the other schools. I mean, is, is, are we just funding the educational system of Macon County or are we trying to address other issues, a justice center, a courthouse, you know, so many other things that uh, we need to be addressing. So. I, I, I'm not opposed to improving educational facilities at Franklin High School. I think they're much needed, but I would like to see what the options are. Uh, I can't support this just deciding too much. We're going to spend $100 million. If it goes to referendum, I'm 100% behind it. Mr. Young? <clears throat> well, uh, talking about the referendum, in response to the 12 year mark, I was just coming out of high school. And I still had a flip phone. You know, this new technology and social media, I feel like if the public really knew that building was 70, 72 years old, and if they knew that the gym had a boiler that's that's failing, and there's still, you know, catastrophic failure, I, don't, I haven't heard anybody oppose once they understand all the, the issues. I think knowledge is power. So everybody I talk to, when you hear 80, 90 million dollars, they, they, they gasp. But then when you say, well, if we'd have built it 10, 20 years ago, it'd have probably been 55 million. If we build it 10, 20 years from now, it's probably a, who knows? It's pure speculation. So I think knowledge is power. I mean, I do like to have some community input. I think there may be some potential for a hybrid where we could get something kind of going in the interim with, you know, with some uh, track and athletic facilities. I, I still I still find the track as a priority. I mean, the track was bad when I was in school. It's not getting any better. So. I really want some community involvement. I want to hear from the teachers. I want to hear from, you know, the, the, you know, just some seniors in the community and just hear from the people. And, and I don't want to rush it. I don't want to spend a hundred million dollars and back up and say, you know, we do that thing together. I want it to be methodical and thought out and, and a representation of, of uh, you know, good leadership with some, some good, you know, foresight. So that's my take. All right. My turn. Um, I, I'm kind of between uh, what Commissioner Shields was saying and what Commissioner Young was saying. I'm, I'm right in between the two of them. I, I, I'm. I don't think I'm for biting off that big of a tax increase tonight, but I'm for a tax increase. I'm thinking we might go ahead and uh, go up just a few cents, uh, not six cents. More of a, I was thinking more of a five percent increase versus a, a dramatic one, uh, or even a you know seven percent. Uh, and my thoughts on it are is that we take that money and go ahead and hire an architecture firm and go ahead and start the plans and then we start the uh, discussions. As Commissioner Young was saying, you start putting the plans, you start getting input, and then once we know what we've are going for, we have a an end to our plans. We have an end of the road of what we're going to trying to do. Uh, that we have all the thoughts from across Macon County in, we're going to be right into valuation at that point, okay, two years down the road. Uh, and it, it's going to be dramatic. Uh, uh, county manager and I were discussing the other day, we're not, what, Jackson County just put a billion dollars. They picked up a billion dollars. I'm expecting Macon County to be very close. Mm -hmm. And I think then that's when you figure out where to pay for it. And in the meantime, we also have a time to go for it. Commissioner Higgins said a, a referendum, but 
I mean, you could pay for it, architects, out of fund balance, but we also have some other, we have some other items in the books uh, that we've already got the ball rolling with SCC, uh, with uh, Nantahala, uh, with the community building. We've got some other stuff that we're going to be pulling from that. I keep hearing, I, I don't know where it comes from, but I keep hearing from our advisors it's not good to pull too much out of fund balance at one particular time. But I really wouldn't mind seeing us moving forward with uh, taking the plans that were presented to us, uh, pursuing them further, and I, I will support a tax increase if it is to pay for that, if that's what we need to do to pay for that. We all have difference of opinion. I hear you yes, Paul. That's fine. Lori, I mean, I hate to interrupt. But I'm in between here. Yeah. It's 6 2, uh -huh. you said it, it raised $5 million a year or $4 the, million a year? The 6.63 cents. Yes, raised, raised $5.3 million. In a year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can we not? How much would it cost Jimmy to do what you're suggesting? I, uh, obviously, if it's just five point three million, Mr. Chairman, it would still cost for the time you pay the architect fees and hire that person. I, still looking at four cents. Well, how much uh, is the architect's fees? Four million. That'd be five pennies. If it's yeah. four million. We're not going to pay the architects one hundred percent up front, though. No. We're looking for some. You can't pre you can't pre audit the contract if the money's not available or budgeted. You have to have the money budgeted so. and have the money available. <laughs> I know when Emily Kite was here, you know, she talked about phasing it. I don't recall. She's like, you she know, wants to start digging dirt in September too. That <laughs> bored me. But there was talk of phasing it, and you know, possibly, uh, I can't remember what she called it. it was some kind of study. Because, uh, of course, there was questions about the soils. I think, we, I think she said we'd do that for $60,000. Yeah, there was some kind of a study. Uh, so it just depends on what the pleasure so of the board we've got is. So two point something million to go into the National Guard Army, speaking of things that was done on the spur of the minute. Two, two point something million there, right? We haven't, uh, we're, actually, dead, we haven't started <laughs> defining that yet. We're still we're waiting on SEC to get back. With well, it'll be about two, two million or so, we, we estimated. Then we got seven hundred grand in Nana Hala for the uh, building to creek. No, 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 no. How much? Jack Morgan said seven hundred something thousand, didn't he? They tell what Jack came back with? Yeah. We have the program. Yeah, thanks for that. Right, no, but that's why he said it was going to cost to fix it. That's why you're going to cost to fix it. We ain't appropriated that. It's hundred fifty thousand dollars by the building. Yeah, but we got to fix it. It ain't a building. All it is is a roof. So we got to. It's a that's money that we've got to allow for. These other requests that we have from the school, from the art department to the, especially the school nurses, that's money. So either you're going to have to hit the fund balance pretty hard for reoccurring cost, or, you know, like Jimmy says, you can phase it out, but I think the lowest you can phase it to is, uh, it's, it's probably five cents, Mr. Chairman. I don't know. It's just hard for me to have an alarm when there's 51 percent in the fund balance. But to me, it's like when you when you up the mill rate. But there's not 51 percent in there, Josh. That's well, the thing about it. What I've what I've calculated, Mr. Mr. Manager, if you what is the fund balance? It's in the it's, in the, it's 51 percent. It's estimated. in your budget. Yeah, estimated. Yeah. estimated. But to it's take estimated. the total, it's a 25 million. Like, I just have a problem. 28. Up in the mill rate with. How much? How much money do we have in our deck? We, it's we estimated, agreed to twenty-five percent. It is estimated in the fund balance is estimated to be fifty-one point six percent, or approximately twenty-seven point six three two million in unassigned fund balance. And I'll take twenty-five percent off of that. that. Is an estimate. So you take half, half of that off because we've got fifty percent. Y'all's policy is twenty-five, so you divide that and by half. So that's so you how much real money you have. No, that's that is unassigned. That that is unassigned money. Million. Is that that's allowed for our 25 percent? We have no, to keep that, in. That's unassigned fund balance. That's not allowed. No, no. that's at 51 percent, 0.6 percent of the budget is 27.632 million. If you have that number, that gives you 25 percent left in there. Right. So, so that tells you about how much money do we really have in fund balance, Lori? About 13.8. If you 13 cut it, if you cut it in half, you if have 13.8. Yeah. yeah, that's My about God. what it is. We never want to do that in one lick. That would affect our credit rating. You know? Oh yeah, you can't so, do yeah. that. Well, it wouldn't cost thirteen million to do it. It's yeah, I know what you're saying. Right. It's just, it's right. just, all I'm suggesting is how do you go to the taxpayers and say we're up in your mill rate? Well, why do you have 
$31 million sitting in the bank and you're going to up my taxes. Like, use the money you have before. Like, that's all I'm suggesting. It's just a, a thought, again, part of my experience. No, that's not it. I've, I've worked that for eight years and got shot at every time, you know. We're going to raise people's taxes five mils. And the, and the architect fee would be a, for the plan design, would be a one-time expenditure for your plan. Now, it, it, it would be, you know, if you have to separate the contract, what are you going to contract with them for? Uh, you know, you got plan design, and can you separate plan design and bid? And bid? I don't know. I don't know that. We'll have to, we'll have to research that. Process. Uh, Typically, we appropriate fund balance or something like that, but then when we go borrow the money, we repay we our yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the typical pattern has been. That would make a lot more sense. Is to appropriate fund balance and then repay ourselves. Absolutely. When the loan they say, Mr. You got you hold sixty percent of the card. So, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, so we're we're ignoring All the vote no anyway. It don't matter. Absolutely. Matters, so. uh, <laughs> But, uh, so let's just move on I from that. I don't vote on the motion. Uh, so if we do this, the referendum's de the dead, right? We're not taking it to referendum. This no, is a start. That'll be for the referendum can only happen in even number of years, so it'll happen with next year's election for the referendum. So my, my suggestion was was to get the plans drawn, do the background information, so when you sell the referendum or here here's what we're selling the referendum on. This is what it's to pay for. You're talking about a solid plan. Yeah, and what, solid and at least we need that. that. And, and if referendum the referendum fails, then what? You're going to leave them in old high way. school for the next 52 years? If that's what the people want, Ronnie, give it to them. That's for representative know, government, man. I think that's why I was elected to, to have these tough votes. No, you didn't elect to spend all this money. No, no, you've never taxed it. They've been right since you've been on this board. What? Taxes ain't been right. Oh, absolutely. What, one, Two years ago, one we went from 34 9 to 37. Ronnie, you're forgetting. Well, we stayed revenue neutral. We stayed revenue neutral. That was when we had the, that's when we had the last uh, rebound. Wow. And that was revenue neutral. That wasn't a tax increase. But if it goes from 34 9 to 37, isn't that a tax increase? But it's revenue neutral, Paul. That's, that's where the, anyway, the value okay. of the land. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Back. No, no, no. Everybody's getting. So, so again, I'm just going to make a mock off. I think it'd be good to have a solid plans if the referendum, again, Passes. I think there's other means versus just paying for it immediately up front and balancing it all on. But you got to send the referendum to a fail, Mr. Chairman. Then what? Well, if it does, cross it does, that bridge when you come to it. Cross that bridge when you get there. Then maybe then you have to balance it on the backs about the war. Uh, that's what you do then. So. Ronnie's been getting his name on that board for 20 years. Josh, where are you standing with us? I, I just feel like it's hard for me to raise out of alarm with that much money sitting in the bank. I, like I said, we made a okay. made a discussion about 25% as a gentleman's agreement or, or a contingency with other commissioners. And to me, it's just hard to go and tell my grandmother that we're up in her property taxes and she's going to look at the bank and say, well, I, I just have a hard time selling that, especially, especially as I'm told right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what did one penny give us? Where do you live? Tell her not to. One penny gets you. $100,000. Y'all know clearly. We're in the best feet, so we're, uh, we're in a quandary here. But I still think we need. I, I still think you need to move on with a plan. All the people talking about a plan. I agree. Let's put it together. Let's put this plan together. I don't, I don't know how it's going to cost. I hope the end result of the plan, how you're going to finance it, is it to get a new high school. Yeah, I couldn't agree. Yeah. And if the people of Macon County want it, let's do it, Gary. Let's build the best thing we can. But let's not ram something down everybody's throat just because we want a new seat at the We're football not stadium. Nothing down our throat. So, uh, I guess should should we at the same time look at how much it's going to cost to renovate the current structure, the football field, the fine yeah. arts, the main building, the gym. I think that ought to be an option. Absolutely. <clears throat> what? So do we pay we've for done that. that. Do we pay for that Where's it at, Ronnie? Well, we, we had those numbers. We had, that? Was I've way, not seen was, those numbers, Ronnie. It, it was going to be years. more than the high school, a new one, at that time. Well, where Remember are the numbers, Ronnie? I don't know where that was, whatever happened to all that. I've never but seen them, but I've been here nine years, was, and I've parked The fine arts building was going to be, I forget, we could, it was going to be cheaper to try it down and rebuild it. <laughs> we do everything on the motion. We don't <laughs> do anything <laughs> on the facts. Like, yeah, right let's right get another nice little guard armory up there. That'd be good. Let's move it into a... Progress forward. Let's don't just stalemate here. 
Yeah, yeah, no, no, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Just figuring out how we go for that. Appropriate some funds to get a solid plan or options or whatever. Dr. Baldwin. We have a lot of and other things on the agenda. If it's not a, uh, if it's not a uh, and I'm, pardon me, but if it's not a, if we're talking about doing it out of the fund balance, that's not something that we would have to, yeah, we can do that time, after we yeah. get a quote from the architect on, on what a contract for a set of plans would look like. We, we don't have to. We don't have to nail that in stone to be able to have a budget ordinance. No, 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 not at all. FY22 budget yeah. forward. If y'all all have the consensus to take fund balance to hire an architect, I will, that's not a part of budget ordinance. I will add to what, what Manager Rowland said. I mean, that was one firm with one opinion, and uh, that was all conceptual, and it was, you know, it, it cost nothing. I'm sure there are many other firms that are willing to... You know, we put it out for bid, we accept prices. We, look, I'd like to see other options. Mr. Shields, we love that concept, but there's more than that. There's more than just that company. I'm sure they're the preferred vendor, but, you know, I want to put it out there and, and keep keep them honest, you know. I don't want to see other bids. Yeah, and what you're saying, Josh, like in North Carolina, general <coughs> statutes, they just got with Novus and this construction company and presented something. Uh, other companies could present ideas, but at the end of the day, we have to advertise and do a request for qualifications. Architectural services in the state of North Carolina are qualified-based selections. So unfortunately, uh, well, maybe you're talking about price for a new school, but the way the process would work is we would advertise, we would rank the firms based on qualifications, whoever's the best ranking, then we negotiate a contract price. Does that make sense? And so you but yeah. the liaison will sit on that committee, just like we did to rank middle them, school. Yeah. So you would be a part of that the best architects right. from all across the Southeast <clears throat> that, are, that are gonna bid on that project. But yeah, so like you're saying, there's nothing wrong if, uh, like we're, we're working with SGR, SGA Normal Right right now, we're making middle renovations. If we wanted to ask them, hey, what's your conceptual idea you know, again, uh, we, we can ask for that, but at the end of the day, when we finally pick an architect, it has to be on their qualifications. Um, so I just, I know you're new on the board, so just just trying to share that knowledge, because uh, it's different, because most <laughs> things you think, you, you go out and get a bid, and that's your best price, you go with that, but it's really strange on architects, you have to do it on qualifications. Then they tell you, okay, we'll do it for 8% of the contract, or, you know, whatever, 6% of the contract, so. I'd like to put something in a motion to move it on towards a workable plan. If the next step is getting the architectural piece in here and us to develop a plan, I'd like to put that in a motion. It, it, let's move it on. Let, let's see. We don't know what the end result. We've looked at one one group. and uh, But if you go to the architectural plan, let's give some people with understanding of what we're trying to put together here, an opportunity to come and show us what options we have. I 100% I, I, I agree. I think the big, the big discussion now is do we fund that through the Miller Aid or do we fund that through the fund dollars? I, in, my, in my opinion, uh, my mind was on the fund balance, not through the millage rate. My mind was on the millage rate's going to have to come if you get that fund if you balance, the 90 million, that's, yes. yeah, it's going to have to come down the road if if we choose to go that way. But how are you going to pay this now if it's the fund balance? Let's go. Let's let's put something out here because people need to know. I've had a conversation with a number of people. I'm not sure they they believe that we've got the guts to pull this thing and move it on. <laughs> I mean, I'll second that, that if that's a motion, but. Uh, I mean, does there right. have to be an amount that we have to approve? The, no, the motion would be to, 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 to put out an RFP. Uh, so we got a motion for the second on the floor. Services. Okay. Uh, for What's the motion? Plan design. To put, to out, to put out a bid for architectural services for a new high school. Yeah. That's it? Well, that's my motion. That's, that's it? We'll decide how to pay for it. It'll, it'll come out of What was it, Josh? What, what, uh, I, just I understood it as it's a motion to advertised bid for architectural services for a new Franklin High School. That's plan design only. Plan, plan design only. Plan 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 that's step one of the plan. Yeah. Just get the plan. All right. To me, that's that's moving forward. It, would that include just say, hey, design a new high school or explore options in improving and make the Franklin High School? I think we've... I know you 
Paul, I'm sorry. I'm thinking. I think we've surpassed that. I think we've all decided to keep it on the campus location. Oh, keep it on the campus, that. absolutely. And then looking at how we how we handle handle that, just maybe having somebody else look at it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think in answering Paul's question, uh, under I'm going to say concept two, there's a pro and con. If we start on the east end of that campus, there's less disruption for the students. One day. They'll go into the east side of the campus and go to class. We don't have all this disruption. And that's the pro and con of it. And it's it's in our discussion. Uh, but the concept two, I can only speak about the concept two. And concept one, but concept two was uh, less disruption for the academics, less uh, disruption for the students, more safety and everything. Anything else, Dr. Ball, it, it was... Yeah, it, was, it was a way to, way to do but it. The reality is, Mr. Chairman, we're just kicking the football again. We're just punting her down the road. Uh, we're I going feel to, like we're moving forward. This would be 2023 now, right, Lori, before it would come back up? Yeah, if you don't do a tax increase yeah. now, you so can it's only two, set your millage rate once a year. Yeah, you once budget. a year. So it's 2023 before you'd ever see it again, and, and it'll be the same thing then. So. Uh, get ready to stay in your high school for a while. I have to stay on all these votes to save my nose, or I have to vote on. You got to vote. Oh. So we got to. You want to comment on this motion that's on the floor, and we'll move on to the next one. Mr. Chairman, where's your you seconded? Well, where's your suggestion about the milli tray? Oh, well, let's let's take this. Let's at least move forward with the plans. We're good. Is there, and then come out of fund balance. Is that well, what we haven't decided how we're going to okay. pay for it okay. yet, but it will. Yes. Okay. Any comments on this motion before we move forward? All in favor signify by saying aye. Raise your hand. Three. I mean. Four. I'm, I'm. All opposed signify by saying by raising your hand. Yeah, picking just, one, picking an With a note that Ronnie Bill says we're the kicking paper. the football, we're putting the ball again. There's no money at this point. The architect selection is just we're a down down the road. Paper. Now, it's the budget, it, it, the budget. We're by, we're by default in approving the budget on June 8th, saying we're going to take the money for the architectural services out of fund balance. We've got other things to talk about, though. Well, because they, they have to take action later. <laughs> right, right. But, but you can't, we can't go back at You can't go back and adjust the military. We're going to raise the military. No. So, no. We don't need to raise the military. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to have that. This is the only shot you get. This, is, this is the one shot we had. Now, here's going to go by us. You'll not see a high school. Right. I'll have to disagree. I disagree too. I don't disagree. I know. We're still having this discussion right now. <laughs> Lori, um, I haven't brought this up yet because I wanted to see how this school conversation was going to go. Um, there was not a cost of living increase for affected county employees. Correct. What would a what is a two percent cost about, of living? About four hundred thousand. Okay. I would personally like to see that paid for. I would personally like us to see. Uh, some additional funds put in for uh, uh, our payroll study. Is that to Gallagher? Well, just for, for I know the, Ronnie the results brought, of that. Yeah, just uh, so we've got 1.2 million in the budget, which covers about six percent, right? So Gallagher told us seven to nine percent on average. So if you took that up to nine percent, say worst case scenario. Um, that would be 1.8 million. Two percent cola gets you to 2.2 million. So we're about That's a million shy. That's what I, we're about a million it. shy, which is what one and a quarter pennies on the tax rate. So Paul, well, you're shaking your head, so you don't think our employees <coughs> deserve a two percent cola on the year? No, oh, I think they absolutely. But we're looking at six percent now for certain positions, but not everybody. The cola yeah. average. Some will be more than six. Some will be less right. than six. They'll so all be over two percent. Some could be zero. Some yeah, could some, be zero. some, some could be zero. zero. If it's fair, some could be zero. But if we're, we're at least we're addressing payroll, right? You know, okay. Uh, okay. And that'll be through when they're the, we're appropriating one point something million now for employee one raises. Two million to be to be implemented following completion of, of the Gallagher study in late summer. And no, I'm shaking my head. Let's take the raising the millage rate. 
plus hey, that. Boy, yeah. I, I understand. I, I know where you stand on tax increases. <laughs> You can only that's, bleed that's, so that's much. Clear. That's clear. You can only bleed so much out of the people. So we got other things too, Mr. Chairman. If you think about the COLA, uh, we still have the school request uh, of 1.6. We still have some of these other things in com that affects communities. We still like talked about the library in Nanahala. Uh, so we have several projects that's really pending that are so important so the thing about the schools they just received 15 million dollars you know they put the money there it's not like we're neglecting them they've got the money yeah but it's, they've got to decide how to spend it but it's sitting in the account yeah. say that again Josh, I, I missed so, it so this uh, that's their money they just received how much was it over the past two years almost 15 million dollars am i wrong in saying that so yeah we've got we we got um i think we have seven we get we got a drop within the last two weeks of seven million um and uh, so we have 11 million in the last two weeks Total. Uh, total, yeah, that, that seven, that seven million is, no, seven million is what we got right now. That's half of the total. So about 14, 14 we'll, uh, we'll have about 15 million, it's all set down. We got, we have seven million within the last two weeks, we received seven million. I, I don't doubt that you need it, I just, I mean, it's hard to sympathize when you just receive 15 million dollars, you know, it's, well, we, it, it's sitting look, there, you know. We didn't know when, in February we were getting a penny. So that's Magic my only, money. you know, it's Magic not money. like they're not getting it, so. Yeah. How do you feel about putting that reoccurring cost, Ms. Baldwin? Well, I don't know how we're going to address COVID without a significant part of that being recurring for at least until 2024, December 2024. Uh, at that point, you know, I think when we hire folks, they've got to understand it's for a three-year contract at yeah. the most. And, and I, you know, I think that that's, that's doable and many of those positions, but a lot of that depends on what the state does with mental health and school nurses. Yeah. I mean, we, we may, yeah, school Medicaid nurses expansion may should pass. There, there's two bills right now that, that they're wanting to put a school nurse in every school. I mean, there's... With no money. If they said it's going to be out there. Well, they'll probably say, use your escrow money to put those school nurses in. <clears throat> but then that does, that does allow us, but for, like you said, right. three years, then you got to come so, back. But if you, and you mentioned, Dr. Baldwin, like a lot of the capital needs, would it so if we could use and knock out a lot of use this this funding like like we're saying with the the ESSER money to knock out a lot of these capital needs could we then maybe move like the chairman was saying move some money from the annual capital outlay appropriation from at 1.15 maybe take that to 700,000 and move that 400,000 into operating and allow you knowing that that would be a a, a move for the foreseeable future, a, a permanent move uh, for the foreseeable future that would allow you to put where you needed in operating uh, and use this to use this uh, extra money, like Josh was saying, to knock out a bunch of these capital needs, thereby reducing the reliance on the well, county money. For so capital. here's the problem with some of that, though, and that is the East Franklin project was denied. We're going to reapply. I don't know what they'll let us. Uh, use that extra money towards capital because how will how are they going to uh, read our uh, reasoning and will they apply those um, our reasoning to those three uh, issues that they guidelines that they identify you know I, I, it'd be hard for me to say that how they'll how they'll approve those capital projects Dr. Bottle that goes back to what I was saying earlier though if we offer you the flexibility you use those monies how you can, then we offer you the flexibility with our funds. Because you don't know how you can use those. But our funds are a little bit more flexible. The, the, the difference is, is that we understand it's a little bit of a shell game and that we're, we're probably going to be looking into some reoccurring costs at the county level three to four years down the road uh, when this happens. But that's what I was trying to say earlier. You, you guys are just a lot more clearly stating it than I was. Yeah, but I think we do, we will need to agree on, on like like a number. Like if we're going to say we're going to move 400000 from capital into operating, so we're going to have to be good with that and know that capital is going to go to uh, 
1.15 million minus 400,000, 750. And the, our capital outlay appropriation is going to be at 750,000, and your your operating cost, your operating appropriation is going to increase by that. Well, what I would say to that is that that's that I think that's doable until 2024, and that, right. from that point sure. on, sure, you know, sure, I don't know yeah, what, it hits a roadblock. Yeah. yeah. And like you said, if you did operating expenses with that extra money, you got to have them on three-year contracts. But you know, as far as counting money, like the chairman was saying, that that'll give you the, yeah, so the we, flexibility there. We could address the entire uh, operations request out of ESSER. I'm pretty confident that we can do that based on those three. Um, I think it'd be easier for us to address those three guidelines through operations than it would be for capital. Because that's what we ran into with. Yep. That's the only thing they denied out of our budget request was those six classrooms at East front. I think we can reapply and still have those that, that available to us, but we're going to have to be a little bit more specific on how that six classroom addition is going to address learning loss right on COVID. Thank you. <coughs> when did they turn us down on that? Josh got that information within the last 10 days, maybe something like that. Does Love know that? Uh, the, the reason I'm asking, we got a we got another meeting in July. In July, and I just yeah. We we will have reapplied and probably have word back on the reapplication by the, by the next time we meet. Okay. If we can't swear, we're going to get a. We're not going to be denied again, then, right? No, we this plan. No, I, I do conversations that I've had with the DPI rep since then, and with I had a conversation with Ms. McMahon yesterday about specifically how that those six classrooms could um, address their space issues. You know, the classrooms at East Franklin are so small, you can't socially distance. Yeah. You're talking about. 3.750 Yeah, and that was based on what we spent at South Macon for those six classrooms. You know, that was that was three, so we bumped to three seven five. But after not listening to the fire department, we probably didn't go high enough on no. that. Not at four hundred dollars square foot. Yeah. Well, Cartuca J, or uh, South Macon was three fifty. Yeah. And that was in when? Well, that, that, wait, we, that was three million dollars, and so I budgeted three seven five for the six classrooms in East Franklin. It's all good. Oh, I mean, but how could you? So we get one hundred thousand right now. Yeah. I mean, but that just give flexibility and they went fail with them. But you know what? We be, you, the thing too, though, is that in that discussion, uh, then you go back to the high school. What's it going to cost to repair the high school when you start going in there? You can't read that high school. The high school is, we've decided a long time ago, it's not. We put a lot of money in the high school with QVAD, QZAB, and QSCAB, or whatever it was. Uh, you know, we put bathrooms in the gym, which wasn't there. We redone the main building electrical the best we could. Uh, we spent a lot of money there and didn't, and, and, and really didn't touch it. Spent millions and didn't touch it. You know that. Oh yeah. And a lot of that. Um, it's uh, the wire and asbestos. We took the asbestos. Well, I'm ready to go eat supper. They're doing asbestos re renovation right now. Mm -hmm. Huh? Didn't know we was gonna be here all night. Oh, it ain't seven thirty. Gun smoke don't even come. I ain't got anywhere to go, but I do. <laughs> gotta go home. Gotta go to work. It. I've got. I'm gonna have to be there at five thirty in the morning. So we're going to spend everything we can. I know we've been here a long time. Mr. Manager, let me ask you a question. Um, uh, I'm noodling through my mind here. Uh, if we raise the property tax rate to 0 0.40, which would be a two and a half cent uh, increase, that would be roughly 1.6, about a $2 million increase, Lori. Uh, could we move an additional 800000 into your... Sheriff's Thanks, Department, our pay plan, pay plan study. compensation. Yeah, Lori just said it's probably going to take two million. We could give thirty thousand to the library, and then I recommend we put the rest into a building fund for the new high school. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is the two percent cola in there as well, or just the? Mm -hmm. 
I, I think that you will determine that when you do your payroll. I, I'm up to y'all on that. I just heard what you said on your 2.2 million. I'm asking. I'm just throwing the nugget out there. I'm, I'm asking. So. Okay. So. Well, no, I think that's a. Uh, one. We, what's what's his? If you wanted to do a two percent cola, basically July one, plus the nine percent on the pay plan, that at that average number, that would take one point two five pennies on the tax rate, um, which is a million dollars. A quarter a million okay. dollars. So, um, so you're saying if you raise it two and a half pennies, you'd gain another million. That you would that start you your. I know it's. One out of ninety, but then that at least sets you forward on towards your referendum once you start paying. That would at least put the referendum at a at a maybe a a ten percent chance of passing. But if it don't pass, it, then it won't be the so hard. If you are going to continue with the school, it would be better than hitting the referendum at, all at once. And plus, I would also recommend, Mr. Chairman, if in if this is the way we're going, is we take. A portion of that money and, and increase our contingency fund for some of these projects that we've talked about. That's minor, you know, in comparison um, that that we have come up in the middle of the year that we always will have. Uh, but I would increase the contingency out of some of that if that should pass, Mr. Mr. Manning. What do you think? Three, y'all think it's a good idea. I think it's a good you idea. love it. Okay, so just to recap, two cents. Two and a half. I'm sorry, two and a half cents gets us about two million dollars. No. Six sorry, million. I'm confusing myself. Six Six <laughs> oh, that's you said eight hundred thousand for a penny. And her credit, she's the only one that can fix another half for one. Okay, it is two million. Sorry, I'm it's just like million. my brain's fried. So two million. Okay. So if we did four hundred k for a two percent cola. 800, um, 800, 600,000 to get us to 1.8 on the pay study. Okay. That's a million. That, that, that is, in my opinion, the most important thing in making county sound. That's even more important than the high school. We've okay. got to take care What's of our What's the employees. other million dollars then? We're not going to have a county left. Exactly right. Losing them. What's the other million go to? If I was suggesting them. just putting the point out and setting aside towards our well, there's all, I mean, we've got, attack, whatever you know, you be. got the, you got whatever it is going to be at the, at the National Guard Armory. It's got to be the building we got to finish at Nana Halo. We got, uh, we got several projects and we got some very small projects, uh, community projects to go along with that. So. Uh, that's reason I, you know, if we put that in contingency, it always makes it easier when we have these requests, whether it be, you know, from the, you know, if, from the community fund pool or whatever it is. And speaking of that, I think it would be good. We do have a. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. We do have a, a, numerous projects, like the building at Nana Halo. You know, we need to settle on is that building going to be used for a community center slash library or. Is the library going somewhere else and we're going to renovate that in this year? Are we going to still do the National Guard Armory in this year? But we need to pick out a few, uh, one of those at least. And prioritize. And, we, and prioritize those. Hey, we're going to do this one this fiscal year, this one next fiscal year, and this one three years from now. But just so we can have some idea of how we can lay that money out. Who you work on that? Go back to what Mr. Higg is talking about. This is a plan that we need to put out here for the next uh, three to five years. I'm trying to give you the flexibility to do that. But yes, sir, Mr. Young, go ahead. Here's, here's what gets me. I mean, you talk about a plan. But where's the plan? Like, what is the plan? Like, here we're talking about spending a couple million more dollars. Like, my business has a plan. And, like, I, I try to, it never works perfectly, but like, what? What's the plan right there? Like we're spending a couple more million dollars raising the mill rate again. I say again, we'll have to raise it again. So there's two mill rate increases back to back. Like I think we just need to stop for a minute. Like I've sat on this board. Like I don't like people coming to this board and begging me for money throughout the year. Like I think there needs to be a point in time where Calway School, like this, this stuff gets budgeted, and all of a sudden when they come to us, we say, look, we're, you know, 
these expenditures are for dire needs and rest of that you know we're going to budget that next year and like i just think we're just throwing so much money got a really contingency job. well what i'm saying is i don't want to keep adding to the contingency so people keep coming and we just throw them just throw them little tidbits i feel like i sit here and people walk up and i say hmm that's a good story yeah let's give you like i want a plan like i don't feel like it's my money to give away so my position is 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 let's like let's not halfway do this if we're going to do it let's do it if we're not Let's not, but we're going to up, go halfway there and just kind of hope the referendum passes. But if it doesn't pass, then we're going to go ahead and raise the mill rate anyways. But, like, you know, I just want to get together. And I, I, I don't disagree with you saying at all in the schools. I'm worried about them and how we're going to afford that, how we're going to afford this pay plan. I don't think 1.2, 1.3 million okay. is going to touch it. I'm more concerned about that and giving us the flexibility there to handle that and I also think our employees deserve the two percent cola. I mean look at what gas is doing. There's no doubt employees are underpaid. And we can't afford it with where we are now, so that's just what I'm suggesting. I to give us some funds to be able to handle that and also give us a little bit of additional funding to be able to handle if you're SEC, if you're me, be able to handle Manahala. Uh, if you're telling me it's my employees, I'm I, I support our local EMS, I can't they're way underpaid, but I just can't support it just to raise it and stick it in the bank and say whenever you know rainy day arises we, we find it i mean that, I that, that's so. my only opposition well listen to what i suggested joshua is it two million dollars approximately two million dollars what's going to come out of that uh how much is going to a cola about four hundred thousand four hundred thousand i'd recommend it so another six hundred six hundred to go towards the pay study so that's one million so that leaves uh, one million left and i suggested we use that to pay for scc Thirty thousand to the library. Uh, so this is, I'm sorry, I might have missed that. We had twenty-five thousand for Glossy and ten thousand for Cowie as well. If y'all are gonna do but that, we haven't paid for that yet. We've, We've agreed that. to do it, but we haven't paid for it yet. So. And there's operating costs with SCC as well. Once those renovations happen, for 40, just for forty-five. Then right. you're going to be committed to the operating expenses, which of course you wouldn't want to take. Enough. You won't have much left out of that, as just for county needs. That's where I was going. It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily for the school. It ain't to build a slush foot, I don't think. So, the tax rate, it, the proposed is, it would go to 40 cent even? I, I'm just throwing we're it at 37. We're like 30, 37. So, we're Paul's on it. Yeah. So we're at 37 <laughs> <40 laughs> It's just throwing village rates around. So, so if we raise it two and a half cents. 2.53 would just get you to 40 cent even. That's what I was asking. You know, that was kind of thrown out 40 cent and then 2.5. But just to clarify, if you want to get to 40 even, it's the 2.53. I just don't, I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> Back to my point, the Franklin High School is important. Everything we do in the county is important. But if we don't take care of our employees here, we're not going to have, I mean, look at how many positions they have. How many does DSS have open now? They have 11. EMS, EMS has seven. Seven. Robbie's got health 13 or maybe 14. You know, health department jobs are in the same boat. You know, there's yeah, so many vacancies so. across DSS, health. And EMS. these people are, it's like Robbie's folks. I mean, they'll... Is they're good folks, but they, they're there to, to make a living. So. That, you don't take care of them. So, yeah. I, I just want to see and what will happen, Josh, with this case study that we're in the midst of, whenever we get it finalized late summer, that will be brought back to you as the commissioners to give the final approval. Um, so we've got money earmarked in the budget, and the job will we ultimately have the final approval. Yeah. Would we'll say, hey, it's going to cost X number of dollars. This is what we're doing, and y'all will bless it or deny it. And I'll support that. No, no, no. That's why you're making too big bucks sitting up here. I don't make these decisions lightly. You know, it's hard. But it won't be so bad on me. It's a little strong. Yeah. Let's wrap it up, guys. And y'all need to circle back around. Don't forget about the library and Aquasi and Cowie. That's thirty thousand, twenty-five thousand, ten thousand. Seventy-three to four. Right? Do we want those three in the budget or not? You know, you're, you're looking at sixty-five thousand dollars. Well, if if this if the tax increase goes through, I would recommend taking out a contingency. Just adding that to contingency. That'd be the simplest, right? <laughs> 
add more. I'm talking about, I guess, with the... If, if the tax increase goes to increase the contingency in this yeah, budget. Yeah, but I'm saying, do you want to fund the library and Nequasi and Cowie? That would be funded out of the tax increase. 65, 65, $65,000 for mm -hmm. the three pieces. And, there, and none of that would be reoccurring. The library be reoccurring. Yeah. The Wells a one time. Nequasi, I it's guess, just depends if you're going to continue to support that. Or... I'm just trying to get my notes straight. Sure. If, I'm, if I've got to bring y'all an ordinance Tuesday night, <laughs> I just need to make sure. Your brain will be. <laughs> my brain is already fried. So, so Mr. Trying... Chairman, what, what are you looking for? That's just my suggestion. If it's the intelligent, responsible way to lead. Yeah, I'll I'll make what, what's going to happen, Ronnie, is we're going to probably get that payroll study back. We're not going to give our employees two percent cola. It's going to come out to two plus million dollars, and we're going to be hung there diving back into fund balance. And it's again. not going to have enough money. Have that's that's what I've always said. That's my big thing. So I'll make the motion that uh, that we that we raise the millage rate two point five three cents to make it even forty cents in this uh, in the upcoming budget. I'll say. Motion and second. Any further thoughts? I just, I mean, my position is just because I want to see a plan in place and I want to know where that money's going. Nothing personal. We'll do it I right just, now. I just, if you can show me on paper where this money goes. I think he's, we've seen it three times. I just, Lori, let me see if I get this right. 400000 is going to 2% COLA for all county employees. Yes. 600000 is going to be added to the pay study budget, to the pay study yeah, budget which will increase it to about. So why is it? Point, I mean, about 1.8, a little over 1.8. We, we didn't already hire the pay study budget. It just We've already hired them, but once they say, okay, county positions need 7 or 9%, then that's the cost. We'll have to bump everybody's salaries up to the proper level. See, what we had left. I, mean, I agree with that. What we had left in the budget at a flat tax rate, at a flat tax rate, we could only, they're saying, you're going to be somewhere between 7 to 9% below market on average. We only had enough to earmark 6%. Six percent. So what Lori's saying, by adding that 600000 that brings that 6% to 9%, which is the top end of where they said we were short. Rather than being 1% less than the bottom end, we'll be at the top of what. So far, I'm in full support. So that's that's $1 million of the $2 million. And the other million I was recommending, we get the library, the 30000 uh, whatever y'all tell me to add to contingency, and then I was recommending we put the rest towards the SEC renovation and the fire building at the fire uh, yes. training facility. Yes, that's we don't know what that's going to be. That's yet. what bothers me. Like, we don't know what that's going to be. Like, how do we well, we've got numbers. You know, like, I just but, I, the first million I'm good for, second million, I, but it's either now or later, so but but you know, there is a uh, there, there is a uh, Compilation. Jack Morgan did it. Compiled it. What it would cost to renovate the uh, National Guard Armory. Uh, there, there is that information. <coughs> I just, uh, I just can't walk out of here. Look, two points of the I don't understand. I don't know. I don't know why I spent a million dollars on just. Comment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eric, we gave you a ch charge this year. Flat tax. Do us a budget. Every year I see the same thing. I've been here nine years. We charge him with giving us a budget. He does an excellent job. His team brings it in here, and then we all have these personal wants. We blow it all two pieces. We charged him to do it with no tax increase, and here we are tonight looking at raising property taxes to over two mils. We blow this budget all to pieces. There's no need to even go through this budgeting process. Uh, we should approve every expenditure as it happens. We need more in contingency because we can't stay within a budget. We can't forecast a year down the road what our expenditures are going to be. So the budgeting process is really a mute point and a waste of exercise. You know, it's, 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 there's no really no need going through this little song and dance. But here we are. It, it the starting budget point again. Your budget is a starting point, right? Uh, That's where we're at now, not what we need. And if we individually didn't have all these little personal wants and you know, I think we can stay within the charge that we gave to county manager. I appreciate the budget y'all presented. I would gladly support it, but I can't support this uh, 
Call the question, Mr. Chairman. All in favor? Yeah, close or something. Sir, go ahead. So we have, we have, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do it. Two million dollars. Two point five. It's two point five three cents. Gonna gain us about two million dollars. Right. Two point five three cents. Four hundred thousand toward a coal two percent cola. Six hundred thousand towards raising the um, amount study. earmarked for the pay study from six percent to nine percent. Right. Then you have a million dollars, and out of that you want to fund. The library at thirty thousand dollars recurring, the Nikwasi initiative at twenty five thousand. Well, that's the, one time. One. Right, that's one time. Yeah. The Nikwasi initiative at twenty five thousand. The Cowie School at ten thousand, which is also one time, and then put the remainder in, in, contingency. in contingency. Well, or a school fund, as Mr. As a chairman, we can certainly put that into that. I into would. The, I would put one hundred percent of it into the paying for that school plan. That's exactly right. So the remainder, after that, the remainder goes into the new high school fund. The new high school fund. Well, how about this? Sorry. We put it in contingency for now until we see what the pay study number actually is, just in case we need a little more. Okay. I mean, are y'all right. agreeable to that? That's fair. And okay. once we get the final pay study numbers and we know it's definitely going to cost X number of dollars, if we have to pull a little bit out of contingency, it's there then what's remaining, we can transfer it over to the school capital fund. Is okay. that agreeable? Agreeable. Okay. With contingency, Josh, Derek and I don't have the capability to touch contingency. Only you as commissioners that, have yeah, that have that, that authority. So it sounds like, yeah, you're throwing a lot in contingency, but we can't touch, touch it. Touch it or move it. It has to require board this. approval. So. Well, How much do we have left out of contingency this year? So. Not a lot. We didn't have a lot. We had what? Sixty thousand left. No, maybe thirty. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. About thirty-eight. So we we tailored pretty well. All in favor, raise your hand. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Three to two. Woo. Just to recap on Tammy, and we're going to say hello to Tammy. Say Tammy. hello to Tammy. She's helping us out. Uh, <laughs> she's got she's got smoke coming off this keyboard over here. <laughs> Tammy, did you get off that? <laughs> Welcome, Tammy. It's good to see you. Can we get a motion to adjourn? Both, are we going to adjourn till next year? We will adjourn. We will adjourn. Our public hearing is still scheduled for. And you'll advertise that so much. We're all ready. Second by Commissioner Hinkton. Gosh. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The county bought some property. Now, Paul thinks you've got money. Listen.